for a five. Welcome everybody to Mog Talk, uh, episode 255. Today's show is about Final Fantasy Port 14 PvP. If you ever watched Mog Talk before, it's about anything in the Final Fantasy 14 community, from Tugboat Racing to uh, Savage Raiding. Uh, and uh, hopefully, I have the audio right because it was a little bit goofy, and you guys heard all of our secrets there, probably. Uh, but before we get too much into this, I want to make sure we introduce all the guests here, and we're going to start with uh, <laughs> start with Plus. Uh, Plus, can you tell everybody who you are? Yeah, so my name is Plus One, and I've been organizing PvP tournaments in Final Fantasy XIV since 2017. I've uh, been playing since 2015, got rank one in Light Party, won the 2016 Fan Festival Feast Tournament. And at, kind of after that experience, that's what kind of led me to want to create uh, kind of community tournaments for this game, because I saw that Square Enix wasn't really doing too much with the mode at the time. And then that's kind of what, what prompted uh, me to launch the Wolves Cup, which was a very high-level tournament at the end of Heaven's Ward. And then we also had one at the end of Shadowbringers as well, kind of featuring the best players, the best teams. We had Sir here. We had Next uh, also compete in actually both of the, both the Heaven's Ward uh, Aether Cup and then the Shadowbringers Wolves Cup. Um, Sir actually won both of them on two different teams. So both these players here are literally, both of these other two players here are literally like two of the best players in the game, in my, in, in my opinion, when it comes to PvP. Uh, mm -hmm. So you'll definitely want to listen to what they have to say. Uh, but other than that, though, I'm currently running a tournament series called the Wolves League. It's actually going to be broadcasted right after this. Sir here will also be competing in that. Uh, and then the Wolves League is just a five-week-long kind of version of the Wolves Cup. So uh, six team round robin, then we do a four team double elimination. And it's going to be a lot of fun. Frost is going to be there commentating with me. So definitely tune into that. Yeah, first time commentating in like a very, very long time. Uh, yes. So I'm, I'm excited to go up there, make a fool of myself and get back into it. <laughs> It'll <laughs> but, be fun. Yeah. All right, next. This is your first time coming on the show. Uh, tell everybody who you are. Hello. I am Nex. Man. Gamer. Sometimes. I gamer so hard. I get rank one. Or win tournaments. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Wait. laughs> <Just> fucking sir. <laughs> Wait, uh, why are you laughing? Uh, no, that's good. It's good. I'm glad you came on. Uh, you are uh, very well known in the PvP community for being one of the best players out there. Uh, you know, maybe the uh, only person who can hold a candle to you would be Sir here. Sir, can you tell everybody who you are? Hey, my name is Sir. Uh, I've been <laughs> PvPing since Season 1 and Feast. Uh, I played all 20 <laughs> seasons. Uh, I was able to get top 10 in pretty much every single season and uh, rank 1 8 times. I got second place at uh, FRC at FanFest, and uh, I'm just really happy to uh, be here on Mogta. What's so funny, guys? Come on. Nothing, man. <laughs> no, it's good, man. I am so glad you're on the show. You know, we haven't been able to get a, you to come on and be uh, on cam before. This is the first time that we've seen you on cam, so this is actually really, really exciting for us. It's like a debut. Uh, we've never had that opportunity. Um, and so thank you for doing that for us this time. I know it's a little bit awkward for you to come on. How do you feel your first time doing cam on Mog Talk, uh, sir? It's, it's pretty liberating. Uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's really nice to be able to come out of my shell finally, stop hiding behind, uh, hiding behind my avatar and just, you know, show my true self. Oh, <laughs> uh, all right. All right. I'll make it through this show. I swear to God, I'll do it. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make this happen. Uh, but that being said, 
That being said, I appreciate all of you guys coming on. Uh, again, obviously, people who are extremely uh, dedicated to PvP currently in Final Fantasy XIV, even over years, years and years and years. I mean, I think... Plus, how long have you been uh, with PvP? 2015. 2015. Actually, in pre-season of Season 1, uh, Nex and I got put on the same Light Party team. So Nex and I actually go like way, way back. We both joined a, P a PvP free company at the time. There were very few, but there was actually one on Gilgamesh at the time. This was like early 2016, and we've been playing uh, together since then. So it was, it was yes. a lot of fun back then, and uh, also got to meet Sir back in Season 1. I'm sure Sir, Sir actually has a really good story about uh, why he didn't get top 100 in Season 1, but we'll, we'll, we'll <laughs> maybe yeah. we'll have time to dive into that later. Yeah, no, sir, just go and tell everybody. Why don't you get a uh, top 100 in season I lost, like, every game the day before the queues died, and I fell off, and then the <laughs> mode didn't pop for, like, a month and a half afterwards because everyone <laughs> decided to stop because the new patch came out. Uh, sir, you, how long have you been playing PvP? Uh, since season one, um, pre-season one. Of the uh, Feast. Of the yeah, feast. yeah, of, of the Feast. Um... I played a little bit of like Wolves Den, like the fold, very briefly, but I, I wasn't really, I, I never really got into it. It was when Feast came out that I started PvPing, like consistently. And next, uh, you've been playing the longest, I guess, maybe, everybody, or no? Maybe. I don't know. I started playing when Seal Rock released in 3.0. Oh, then no. I think that was around the time I started too. Yeah, everyone, everyone knew next back then from Seal Rock. <laughs> uh, that was the time. Yeah. Well, uh, guys, if you haven't guessed, we have a lot of old PvP heads on the show today. Uh, Beast boomers. Beast boomers, as the uh, as the people like to call them. Yeah, In including you, Frosty. Including yeah. you. I played a little bit of as well. Not as hardcore as you. Hey, oh, is my, my mic extra quiet now? Hold on, let me see if I can fix that uh, and make it loud for everyone and blow your ears out. I don't, I think there might be an auto adjust somewhere that's screwing around. Um, but uh, can you guys hear me? Okay, yeah, we're good now. We're good now. I'm looking at levels, it's, it's fine. Uh, but yeah, no, I think, um, we're going to give a little bit different of an opinion than a lot of the community, um, <laughs> has, because most of the community has pretty much just said PVP sucks for the last, I don't know, seven years, right? Uh, and we're the crazy people who, for some reason, we may still say PVP sucks, but we, uh, we still played it a lot. <laughs> we still had a lot of fun with it. And now that the new mode is out. For you boomers, you you old PvP players, what what's your just initial thoughts on the new mode uh, since we start playing this expansion? I think uh, I think Sir should actually answer that. I just want to clarify that out of out of all of us, Sir has played solo queue the most. Like mm -hmm. he plays a disgusting amount of solo queue. Like like not even humanly possible amounts of solo queue. So he definitely has a lot of uh, <laughs> yeah, has a lot, of, a lot of good good uh, opinions when it comes to this. I think. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay. Um. So I, I'll preface everything I say like on this entire show by saying that I think Crystal Conflict is like a good mode. I think it has the potential to be a very good mode going forward. But uh, I think the state of it right now with just how the mode plays, how the job kits play, how everything interacts, how solo queue works. Uh, I, I really have a hard time saying it's good right now. Uh, I, I, I think it's in a pretty unhealthy state. Um, it's in a very frustrating state to play if you want to you know, take ranked seriously in any sort of capacity. And um, I, I think it needs a lot of work from the dev team that I'm not sure they will be able to do in a reasonable amount of time. 
Okay, that's a, a huge, huge statement to say. Mostly because most of the community that used to say PvP sucks now says PvP is great. But you're kind of like saying sort of the opposite. But you're saying this from perspective of someone who wants to like get be very serious about it, right? Yeah, I think uh, the the best way for me to describe PvP right now is it feels like fast food. Like it's it's it feels good to eat short term. Like if you're craving it. You can eat it and you'll be fine, but you can't eat it for a month straight. You can't eat it for a year straight. It's gonna, it's gonna kill you. It's, it's, it's unhealthy. And so, um, I, I think right now PvP just has a ton of issues uh, on a variety of, you know, uh, on a variety of issues. And um, I, I, I think, I think it needs a lot of work still. Okay. Okay. Plus, next, are you guys in the same boat here? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, everything he said is kind of true. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to elaborate at all, Dex? Elaborate? Uh, yeah. I think we'll we'll probably get like a little further into it later. Yeah. Okay. That's fair. That's fair. We'll leave you at that next. Plus, you want to throw anything in there? Yeah, sure. So I think um, looking back at how at, at how Yoshi P uh, described what the new PvP was going to be, like if we go all the way back, like even a year a year ago, uh, and then leading into like October, November when they first announced it, uh, they said this new PvP system was not going to be catered to really to any of the previous PvP players. Like it, it was kind of meant to be more appealing to a new crowd, to a new audience. Um, and I think in that regard, they did succeed with creating a system that is more appealing. Um, there's definitely a lot of things with the gameplay that rewards uh, people who have not put in too much time into kind of learning the system, learning, learning the game. You can kind of just go in there, you immediately see your adrenaline gauge start increasing, and then within you know, 45 seconds, 60 seconds, you can press one button and like kill sometimes multiple people yeah. and it's very as as kind of sir said um it's very easy to kind of jump into and and it feels rewarding like it feels good um especially in my opinion like i think the the first impressions with the new pvp system is actually great because i think like the first time you like go in you you realize how explosive it is you can just kind of go in there get get kills um and like feel like you're really contributing a lot but as uh one thing i kind of noticed especially running the wolves league which we did you know, five weeks of, you know, high level light party, high level um, uh, PVP back. This was May 14th to June 11th, I believe. Um, and what, what we kind of noticed, especially from light party and coordinated play, is that you kind of hit a wall very, very quickly in terms of like what you can do and the strategies that can kind of be employed simply because the game is so explosive now. There's only so much you can do when like people just die in, mm -hmm. you know, a few seconds. Right? And, and not just one person, like because that would, before I noticed that was kind of um, a piece of feedback people had about the feast was that some people thought that you could get kills too easily, like it was actually too bursty. But Crystalline Conflict now is a completely like, I mean, th th this is just that, but like 10 times more intense. Because it's not just one person you can blow up in a GCD. You can blow up the whole team mm. all at once. And um, it kind of leads to these situations where there's a lot of downtime because you... And, and, and we'll, of course, uh, I guess get into this more later. But the engagements now, especially in Light Party, only last 5-10 seconds before you know, multiple people die. The team has to reset, regroup, and then you know, go back in. But there's a lot of kind of... Um, you kind of notice the these patterns over time that makes the game feel a little bit a little bit stale after a while. I'm curious to see though with with season two of the Wolves League how it's going to go. But uh, those are kind of my kind of a summary of my uh, initial impressions so far after what uh, it's been like three months now. Yeah, three months yeah. sounds about right. Yeah. Uh, so I mean, yeah, that's that's crazy. Uh, it, I mean, we could talk about the high-level play of Feast before, right? Um, 
it was still it was good but i mean was that not getting kind of stale and boring as well or did we we definitely prefer uh feast high level in game with light party feast was definitely not perfect i don't think i don't think anyone actually agreed that like feast was was a great mode <laughs> i think even even any of us uh the thing is though a lot of a lot of the the criticism has been more about the gameplay than it is the mode. Like, I think, personally, I think Feast as a mode was perfectly fine. I think the, the actual gameplay and the combat system definitely had a lot of things that could have been improved on. Um, so, even with Crystal and Conflict, I actually don't think that Feast necessarily had to be replaced. More so, the gameplay and the combat actually worked on. Uh, mm. However, with that being said, I wouldn't... The, the current PvP system would not work in the feast like if they brought back the feast right now it would be a mess like that like they should absolutely not do that right. because it, it's it was kind of built with the old system in mind but mm -hmm. uh yeah i don't know i i definitely don't think feast was like perfect but i think there were previous iterations of the feast not necessarily the 5.x iteration of it but i think maybe the 4.x or the or especially the the 3.x system of, of pvp in my opinion was definitely more there was more there for higher skilled players than there is now, in my opinion, uh, specifically talking about like the light party scene. Mm -hmm. I mean, no matter what, they had to get rid of Feast. I mean, they could have made Feast yeah. the most perfect, best mode that ever existed, ever. Yeah. And people still wouldn't play it. It yeah. was just like years and years of bad reputation that like they just had to get rid of the brand in general, the in game brand, exactly. I guess, of Feast. Yeah, yeah. They, they had to hit the reset on it. Yeah, for sure. And and for I think sure. most most PVPers agree that's like what needed to happen. Mm -hmm. But um, and, and and like Plus said, you know, uh, as a mode, you know, I think Feast was fine. And and as a mode, I think Crystal Conflict is fine too. I think a lot of the yeah. issues come from uh, the job kit design and how they all interact together, um, LB designs, and just how in my opinion, shallow and like limited a lot of the job kits feel. Um, with the old PvP systems, you could tell the developers put, you know, different avenues for bursting and protecting yourself into the job kits. And right now, I mean, it, it feels so... It's like almost too, too simple. And it, it leads to this like, just these cheap just like cheap deaths i mean the damage right now is so incredibly high and so easy to pull off and your defensive options to protect yourself from it are just not there compared to to feast the 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 layers of playing around offense and defense have almost been completely removed and it's just now almost all entire offense mm -hmm. i mean i can kind of agree with that um it, it i my experience has been uh just a couple of weeks to be honest with you guys i've been working my ass off to get more familiar with the mo mode and everything else. I just got back from, uh, you know what the big difference in my life recently was, is that I put my daughter in daycare <laughs> and now I have this extra time to get work done and I don't have to spend extra nights trying to get work done and everything else. So I have a little bit more time to, uh, put in the things with, uh, crystalline conflict and everything else. And, you know, initial impressions, I, I think you guys are absolutely right. Like, this is the mode that gets people in there and playing, uh, especially the Final Fantasy crowd, the Final Fantasy fourteen crowd uh, that wasn't playing before will play now because it's... And you always feel like you're being productive, right? Even if you're losing, you're, you're being productive with your time playing the game because you get your series rewards or whatever else from that. Um, so, like... Man, they did a really good job with that initial layer. But talking to like you guys and, and anyone who's like really into the uh, high end gameplay, it feels like it is falling short, and that's scary. Uh, do you feel like there's any kind of room for the growth with the system and how it is right now for the meta to evolve a little bit, things to change, there to be new tactics, anything else? That would change your opinion on that. Do you mean like from its current state? Like yeah, it's, its current they didn't state. make any changes yeah. right now. Yeah. Could it grow? Could the meta uh, grow and could like it actually get more interesting? I'd say it's unlikely. 
with how things are currently going. I think their their design philosophy, whatever it is, I think it's like finally lining up in a way. Because like 3.0 didn't really make any sense. Like it was really, really good, but I don't think they had any idea what, what they were thinking when they were like making it. And <laughs> when they made when they made 4.0, uh -huh. uh, like that's when I quit. Um, they kind of they designed the battle system to be like team play, you know? Like mm -hmm. there weren't you couldn't really solo queue like hard carry unless you were like a healer. But it was it was the same in five point oh two, mm -hmm. uh, where there wasn't really any solo carry potential. And like now with with this mode, it feels like there is. It's like the only issue is that everything is so simplified that even if you do solo carry, you just you don't really it doesn't really feel rewarding, you know. No. Oh. Yeah, and I mean, it's at the, I guess the ceiling is so low that someone else could solo carry just as well as you, right? It's kind of what you're thinking. Kind of, yeah, you could, you could say that. Okay. Um, and so there's two different perspectives to look at this. There's, there's solo queue and then there's team play, right? Solo queue is a whole different beast. It's just trying to climb up a ladder. And I guess a, a good question, a good thought here is, should Square Enix be focusing on solo queue or should they be focusing on team play? I, I think I think initially it's always best to focus on balancing things around solo queue. Because it's especially with 14, where it's like it's kind of like a small competitive community, right? Having having a solo queue mode where putting time into it allows you to be good enough to actually be capable of solo carrying uh, is pretty important, I think. Okay. Sir, plus, you guys agree with that? Yeah, I think, uh, I think focusing initially on solo queue is, is the right play, because Light Party will always equalize itself out into figuring out, you know, what they need to do to play, and, uh, you know, Light Party in this game has never been the main source of queuing, I'd say, um, for PvP, at least not for many, many years. And so um, you, you have to, you know, you have to focus on what is the main, you know, gameplay avenue people want to play in. And that's, that's solo queue. With this. And, that, and that's a really important part of this game because not, not every MMO has ranked solo queue PvP. And so um, I think focusing on that is, is where they should initially start and then branch out when it's in a good spot. Well, I mean, you could. Would you say that the rank solo queue now is better than feast rank solo queue? Oh no, it's horrible. We can no? go to that, we can go to that yes. later. Yes, okay. I would say that. It's you, uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's it's much worse than feast, I think. Uh, the I don't think so. Right now. Okay. But I'm saying this as a as a monk player. <laughs> <laughs> but in in 4.0 and 5.0, it's just like it's uh, it's so hard to have an impact. Mm -hmm. Like a one where you can like definitively say like you actually carried the game. Whereas in Crystal Conflict, it's actually if you if you're a monk, it's actually possible to play like good enough to say you solo carried. The only issue is that it's just like it's so simple to be able to do it. It's just like I don't know. I mean, it, yeah, I've reading, reading the abilities, they don't seem too too difficult to grasp the concept. Uh, you could fit almost every single job was like eight or well, no, twelve buttons, right? About twelve buttons is almost every job. Uh, I, I think every job yeah. has like has like seven buttons for their job, and then the what? universal buttons on top yeah, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so there isn't much to really figure out. I mean, some of the jobs you have to like uh, say, all right, when I press this button, this is going to happen, and these actions are available to me. Uh, but it doesn't really get higher skill level than that, right? With knowledge and remembering and uh, kind of weaving your abilities. Because what I do, just let so you know, what I do right now is I go in and I put all my cooldowns in a row 
and I just press them all at once, then run away, do my single attack, go back, all cooldowns at once, just go back and forth. I feel like that's what most no. people do. <laughs> what do you play? It sounds like fucking Dragoon. Dragoon was one. I've played all of them. I, I, I've, I've touched all of them. Yeah. Uh, White Mage uh, w was fun for me for quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, for some reason... Silly. Yeah, I don't know. I just couldn't get wins in low tier with White Mage as much as I thought I could. Uh, and it's probably because I suck. Well, no, it's just it's kind of hard to carry as White Mage. I thought it was I think, supposed to well, hard carry. No, I mean, maybe, maybe in Crystal. At the start, it was really good. Mm. It was. Yeah. Because, okay. like, in Crystal, I, I mean, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but people are more likely to attack your CC target. Mm hmm. Your little the, minion guy, whatever the, the fuck. The polymorph, whatever. Yeah, the. What, yeah. What, I forget what it's called. Uh, it's like Miracle of Nature, I think. Yeah. I don't know. I, I was. I, for some games, I was winning a whole bunch, and then all of a sudden, I just started losing. Uh, and I was like, I, I did everything. I did everything I can think of, pressed every button properly. Uh, but, you know, when I have one or two team members just like going from the base after they die straight into the party, dying again, and they just kind of cycle through. <laughs> the entire game. Yeah, that'll just, it's I I don't know how to how to do anything about it. Uh because people can easily easily kill you. It's not even like any effort. What was it? I know at least samurai uh they have an ability they press one button and they press their LB and you're just dead. Literally nothing you can do. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to you got to watch it. You got to watch that one. Samurai yeah. Samurai is really bad right now. Oh, is it? Just yeah, because, I mean, as soon as people figure out their little one-shot thing, mm -hmm. I mean, like, all their, their damage is just cast. Like, they have cast times. It's, like, really bad. Yeah, Samurai is, Samurai is, like, really, really bad, I think, yeah. I, okay. I think it's one of the, the, the prime examples of uh, the job kits not being designed in the greatest way for some, from, for some jobs. And uh, I, I would say Samurai is probably the one job that needs, like, the rework, like, a rework the most in PvP. Well... I mean, now that we're talking about jobs a little bit, let's. Do you, do you? Obviously, I'm thinking not. But do you feel like there's at least a decent balance balance within the jobs right now, or no, not at all? For solo queue, uh, it's it's not horrible. I'll say that. Like it could be way worse, and I think they. I mean, they did a pretty good job at the balance, mm -hmm. considering how chaotic it is with five people but i mean <laughs> it could it could definitely use some adjustments i mean how do you uh, balance 19 jobs right I, I just don't see it ever really happening yeah that that's uh that was a concern going into the mode that removing like set roles meant that there's no sort of baseline for each of the jobs to fit into. But at the same time, that was like a complaint of Feast, where we were like, well, all the jobs have like a 2,000 potency burst <laughs> and a whatever defensive. And, uh, you know, in hindsight, we realized they did that for a reason, it's to make everything, you know, work together and not be so crazy. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, like, like Dex said, I think, like, balance-wise, when you look at it objectively, like, when you when you compare all the jobs together, like, they're it's in an all right place, but I think less so about that. It's more so about how the game plays and what your options are when playing it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think damage when you have five people attacking is just way too high and your defensives are just not good enough to protect you from it. Like you, you will die in this mode doing everything possible to defend yourself and it wasn't good enough. Like you, the incoming damage can be two hundred thousand, and the developers think that giving you a defensive that mitigates ten yeah. percent damage is good enough to defend you. And it's like, well, okay, I'm taking one hundred eighty thousand damage now, and I have fifty thousand health. And it's like, well, you want to use guard? It's like, okay, I'll use guard. And half the jobs in the game have abilities that ignore guard, or go through guard, or break guard. And it's like, okay, well, I, I guess I just die then. There's nothing I can do. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh i mean there, there's not it's such a difficult situation i mean they could get it to the point of like saying all right well if everybody uses their abilities to defend 
uh, and does it properly, you won't die. Uh, you can prevent whatever the most damaging ability is. Uh, but then at high level, how often are people going to die? Right? Is that going to be an issue, or would you prefer that? Because, I mean, Feast was kind of like that, right? Almost to a point to where if everybody used every single defensive they had correctly, most likely you won't, wouldn't die. Yeah, I think... Uh... I think they like comparing the gameplay between Feast and this right now. It's like two opposites. You know, Feast was you had to really coordinate and really get through the through those defensives and like bait them out or fake or whatever or just brute force through it to get a kill. And mm -hmm. this is the opposite where they can use guard and they're supposedly taking ninety percent less damage, but sometimes it doesn't even matter and you can just go straight through it and kill. And yeah. so it feels like there needs to be a middle ground where you have the options to defend yourself properly and rely mm -hmm. on them. Mm -hmm. to not die through them, but then also you should have enough firepower to kill people when you need to. Right now, it feels like you kill people too easily, and they have no chance of defending themselves, and that's why I think solo queue right now feels so snowball-y at times. Like, if you play Cloud9 and you and your team dies first, I mean, that's an instant 50% check mark, and they're probably going to you know, mm -hmm. break it and get past that. And it's like, well, you just have to sort of sit back and regroup, and then you might just lose the next match anyways, or the, or the next fight anyway. Yeah, I, it does seem right now, basically, if you win two fights in a row, you win the game. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and, and with LBs, like, charging, you know, only when you're alive, it, 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 just, it just compounds on the fact that if you win the first fight, that's, it's so important. And, and I mean, I guess, it, you know, punishing the losing team is good. They have to make a comeback. But at the same time, with how powerful some of the LBs are, especially the one-minute LBs, I mean... You could win the first fight, get to the checkpoint. By the time the enemy team regroups and comes in for the second fight, you have a massive advantage over them, and it, it, it sometimes it's just completely unwinnable for them. Hmm. Yeah. No. That that does seem like a huge snowball. So basically, winning that first fight, even if you get back, I mean, they have to stand back until they get all their LBs to even like uh, fight you at that point. I would assume, right? Uh, so they give you plenty of time just kind of hang out on the crystal and they can try to poke you and delay you and everything. I don't know. I don't know. Plus, next, your thoughts on uh, kind of the balance overall? I think all of this kind of comes back to them designing the system to be as appealing as possible for new players. Mm -hmm. And it's just a matter of this just not scaling well the higher up the skill level ladder you go. Um, because for new players, all of this that we're talking about is actually great because you yeah. can go in there and kill people and like have a good time. It's just once you kind of start taking the mode more and more seriously, you, you, you kind of start to notice its flaws. But I'll be honest with you, I don't actually think the dev team who worked on this I don't think what we're talking about, everything that, that we just talked about in the past five, ten minutes, is their focus. I think their, their, their focus was more so to create a system that feels rewarding and fun for new players to just jump in. And I think, as I kind of said at the, at the, closer to the start of the show, I think they did succeed at that. But... We're, at, what, we're kind of at the point now where we're kind of putting it under a microscope and looking at it from mm -hmm. the perspective of like the highest levels of play uh, mm -hmm. in both solo queue and light party and like kind of noticing, okay, this doesn't always uh, scale up in, in the most, um, in the best way. So I guess I'll ask this then, uh, and I'll ask this to Nex, uh, just so I can get his mouth to move a little bit too. Uh, <laughs> the... You guys won the Wolf's League, Wolf's Cup here. Uh, what, um, what was your strategy on a high-level play? What was your strategy to win? Uh, <laughs> well, I guess uh, it kind of started. I mean, just like, I mean, because there's like a lot of things going on, mm -hmm. like even outside of a match. Building, Are you like, like talk building shitty? a team comp. Yes. Uh, uh, okay. Yes. Okay. I mean, like, I guess if you're in a in a match, it it varies depending on which comp you're versing. But, um, so you do have to pay attention to the comp of the other team. 
to know how you kind of tackle kind of yeah because, well there's there's like two comps basically where it's just like well i'll say three so you have a comp that like ours that just like fights literally 24 7 and is really good at like skirmishes you have the wombo combo comp where it's just everyone lbs at the same time and then you have uh like the healer comp that diagnosis was running where they have scholar astro um against against wombo combo comps you just like uh using monk lb to focus down their vital members that have lb up uh, against our comp it's just like you just fucking fight hope to god you win there's like out <laughs> skill against the healer comp you literally you just fucking run them down just like constantly <laughs> i guess is okay. these are extremely like simplified but that's kind of like the idea behind uh trying to win okay okay so uh basically there's three different types of comps right now high level play that people focus and try to work uh work on that the that we've versed yeah okay okay um what else besides the comps you know and trying to you know outclass the comps do you do you engage first do you try to make sure that they try to get on the crystal first what do you what do you normally do is it just sitting there hoping that somebody makes a move it depends on the positioning of the teams whether you engage or not i think i mean uh if you have like monk lb or your team has more 60 second lbs like you kind of want to drag uh drag it out as long as possible before you fight just so you get those up prior to fighting just have an advantage uh okay okay yeah sir does that kind of line up with your thought too or do you have any other advice for like high level play things that you guys talk about think about uh to try to win the match man <laughs> All I did was just cover necks as we went into a fight, and I just made sure he didn't die. That's literally, that's literally yeah. all I did. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, but, um, I wasn't being selfish. It's just like, <laughs> if if the monk dies early, it's pretty bad. Like yeah. Especially if you're up it's against another good. monk. Because it can, it can snowball pretty badly. M monk is one of the most important parts, I think, of uh, Light Party right now. Their, their LB being able to just point and click someone, and dash to them and you know cc them for three seconds and break a guard is is an incredibly important tool i think in light party and so you want to protect that at all costs but um yeah no, i i agree with i agree with nex uh the the different sort of team archetypes that are around right now um i will say though that uh some jobs are like really really uh influential in like how you want to fight a game and i don't think in like a good way like if you're going against an astro and they pull spire first, you run the, you run away. You run back to your base and you wait it out because engaging into a team with spire is like just giving them a massive advantage over you. Yeah, they need they need to remove cards yeah. just completely. <laughs> yeah, because uh, well, at least, at least spire. Like, so here's here's what they should do is just make the cards a rotation instead of RNG. It should just be like starts out with balance. Goes to Ewer, goes to Spire, every single time. Okay. Because yeah. having an RNG is just so stupid. It's yeah. like when you're in a match and you have two Astros, it's like, okay, which one draws Spire? And it's like <laughs> if one team draws Spire, the other one doesn't. The other team's just gonna fucking run away. <laughs> I think that's what happened in one of our matches. <laughs> if you actually want to win. Yeah, I think I think we kept drawing uh, Ewer in one of our matches, and the enemy team kept drawing Balance and Spire, and we just yeah. we just ran away. We, we, have to, we have to because it's crazy. It's but, like the difference it makes is insane. Yeah. So real like, quick, Spire is just so stupid. Explain a Spire. Oh, it's uh, it just it fills people's LB bar. Your entire team, their LB bar fills quicker. And and it only it only works if you're in combat. So at the start of the match, if there are just two uh, Astros, okay. If yeah, one draws yeah, Spire yeah. and one doesn't, the other the team that doesn't draw Spire wants to disengage, wants to not even start fighting, because as soon as you start fighting, enemy team is going to pop Spire, and now 
their 60 second LBs turn into, you know, 45 second LBs or 30 second LBs. I don't, I don't know how much the LB charge is, mm -hmm. but they're going to be able to have a way bigger power spike way earlier than you. And if you don't, for whatever reason, win that first fight or it drags on, like you will lose it. So I guess a, a question, this may be stupid, uh, but if one person from your team engages and you're not like close enough, would you get the benefit from that? Like, would you be considered in combat? Uh, so do they have to all kind of stack up in order to get the benefit? I'm pretty sure it's a player by player basis. Okay. Like yeah. if you get if like a scholar like dots you or something, it's only you. Like I think you're the only one that's in combat technically. So basically, you pop it. Everyone attacks and then runs back real quick, or something of that nature. Gets in a better position afterwards, but everyone has to try to engage in some fashion, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you can you can't really run in and then like get your your stuff in combat and then run away. It's kind of hard to do that just because mm. there's so much CC in the game. True. Hey, all right. All right. So we, we've we been a little negative. I mean, we, we've said some positive stuff, but we've been a little bit negative towards the whole new mode, uh, looking at like a high level part of it. What, what could make this into a more positive situation for you guys where you're like, man, I, this is the best Final Fantasy 14 PvP has ever been? What would they need to do to the mode? I think they need to just add job complexity. Just make yeah. it feel rewarding to execute your job properly. I think I think additional job actions for each of the jobs would do a, a pretty good job at uh increasing the sort of depth of each uh of each kit. Okay. I I, I, I feel like the devs can trust the players to add two to three more buttons to each job and have players not have a meltdown over <laughs> jobs being too hard to play. I mean, <laughs> th th there's, there's only so much you can do designing mm. the job for people who drool until the point where like it, it's going to start hurting your, your game. And mm. I think right now jobs are they're dangerously simple, I think. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think it's good long term. Uh, Good stuff, I think, though, are like the LBs and like just like the unique job abilities in each of the kits. Like there are some really cool, like unique PvP only abilities, and uh, I, I I think those do a really good job at like, you know, leaning into the class fantasy for some jobs, leading into their sort of identity. I I think that's a really good thing, and uh, I think some of the LBs are are fantastic for that. Um, you know, the power levels of them are is to be is to be debated but uh i i think you can't I, I think you can't argue that the job kits are all unique in their own ways and they all lean into what it means to be you know a black mage or you know a warrior or whatever i think i think they're i think they really did a good job there but uh there i think there does need to be more job complexity better defensive options and just more buttons in general just to add depth you don't think that's going to make it to uh, lopsided or crazy for new players getting into the mode? Uh, you know, possibly. But at the same time, uh, you know, if 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 you're just pressing one button to kill someone, I mean, wh where's where's the long-term fun in that? You know, wh where where do you derive uh, you know, a, you know an enjoyment out of that months down the line? No, there there needs to be depth here for people to sink their teeth into and to want to try and uh, be good at. And right now, I think that a lot of people are playing right now just to like kill time and stuff. I don't think anyone's really looking at this mode right now, saying I want to dedicate my time to this to be the best Crystal Conflict player <laughs> be because yeah, let's see, like that's the reaction, you know. <laughs> uh, it's it's not it's not there for for people who who think like that. And so I think that they, I mean, just one to two more buttons would still keep these job kits pretty trimmed down and pretty easy to understand. But I mean, just by adding those, you could add a lot of depth, into, a lot of depth to this mode. And I think that's what needs to be, you know, need, needs to be done. You can still appeal to casual players and they'll still be able to play and then play this mode. It's very, it's very easy for them to jump into, but there's got to be something there for uh, higher end players, I think. Okay. 
if they want to take it to like a an esports level or like have tournaments and do stuff like that, they need to add a little bit more. Um, what about? Go ahead. Uh, I wouldn't say like at an esports level. I would just say as like a just a healthier game state, really. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not really. Yeah, it's not about esports. It's not about esports. That's like, all about. That's why you guys get good at PvP, right? So you can go into esports and get sponsored and stuff. Totally, dude. <laughs> dude, we play no. I mean, at least for me, <laughs> for me, like I played the game because I mean, in three point at least I played it because it was like I just had fun. It was like really, really fun. It was mm-hmm. like a really good time. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. Well, man. Yeah. I. I don't know. What. What about viewer? Uh, interaction with the games that are happening. Is it fun for people to watch PvP right now? Because I remember in the past, you know, it, it it was a lot of work to get people to be interested in watching it just because they couldn't really grasp what was happening and who was winning. Even though to all of us, it was so simple. It, it's just some coins, man. Uh, but <laughs> it just couldn't... couldn't uh, I don't know, make sense to a lot of people who are watching it. Do you feel right now the viewership level... Uh, our viewership enjoyment of the mode is a lot better. I think plus answers this one, right? Yeah, plus would be yeah. the best, yeah. I think it is better. The viewership is definitely stronger. Well, at least with the Wolves League, we had around 1,000 average concurrent viewers over five weeks, which is like really impressive, um, or yeah. rather five, five, five Saturdays. Mm-hmm. Um, it's definitely a lot easier to watch than Feast because, and I know I, I remember you saying this on, on numerous occasions, Frosty, how you thought that the Feast definitely had a bit of a learning curve for, for some people to kind of understand what was going on because people had trouble grasping the concept of like metals. And, you know, when you die, you, you lose half of your metal count. And then I made a whole know, fucking video, man. Yeah, <laughs> a whole video to play at the beginning of every single uh, match that we were commentating. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. And back in the FRC too, they played that officially. Yeah, at the fan festivals, they did it at the the JP crazy. one too, which was really intense for me. And did I was they? Just like, yeah, did they? So what they did is they took they that vid, they took the video, uh, and I gave them all the video files for it, and then they put Japanese text on the screen. And then, uh, <laughs> who who was it? His name start with an M. I forgot. It's, is it? Uh, I can't remember. Moriguchi. <sighs> yeah, Moriguchi. I think he was on stage, and he he basically read the script of what I said, but in Japanese over the video, explaining the mode as they were showing that video. Uh, oh wow! And it, that felt weird. And they put my they put my face on the the screen on the the whatever that they had above the stage, saying, "Oh yeah, so and so made this video." I'm like. I made this in like an hour. <laughs> like, this was one of the least impressive things I think I've ever done. Uh, but for some reason, it, it just kept going. Uh, and I, I appreciate him doing it. But yeah, it was a little bit uh, uh, unreal. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I did that. And it, it just was one of those things where even when we're at the big stage event stuff, you still have to re-explain the mode because just not enough people, even who care about Final Fantasy fourteen, knew what exactly. Feast was and that, what what mattered in the match. Uh, but here, yeah. you could just jump in and see it, right? It's not something that is... I mean, there's some aspects to it that you would have to explain, but the goal and the concept of it is pretty straightforward. Yeah, the concept's very easy to understand. Um, I think for... Longer term viewers, one thing I noticed also just from feedback is like also the viewers of the league kind of noticed the same repetitive strategies being used as I have and as the other commentators and and players have noticed too, which is, you know, like people just keep using the same strategies like they've seen it once before they've like once you've seen it once you've you've seen it all type of thing, Um, especially with you know, what kind of what Nex and, and Sir mentioned before with like Astro LB and like holding back at the start of the match intentionally not going in because, and this is something that they absolutely have to change, but the fact that LB generation happens outside of combat means that you can literally just stall the entire start of the match until your entire team has LB and then you go in and, you know, literally just blow up the team. 
Uh, I mean, technically, both teams can do that, and it's just a just absolute mess <laughs> when that happens because there's just deaths happening like left and right. Uh, but but that's something that, for example, we saw happen multiple times throughout the season, um, like teams intentionally stalling at the start, teams trying to make use of Monk LB. Monk LB, as as Sir said too, it's like a one shot pretty much. Um, so like the second you see a Monk have LB, someone on the enemy team is gonna die. Um, and it's just it's just kind of stuff like that combined with because the gameplay is so fast and because people die so quickly as a commentator as well there's not that much you can actually commentate on in real time because like people literally just die instantly so like with with the feast for example in in my opinion i actually think the feast was much better from a commentator's point of view because the battles were actually drawn out people didn't just like die instantly like like you kind of were able to map out how a death happened in real time whereas in cc because people die so quickly because an entire team can die so quickly. You can't really, there's, there's not really that much to, to comment on because a lot of it is just so simple, right? It's just like everyone just pressed one button at the same time, the entire enemy team blew up and, and that's just like the way it is. Um, so kind of the same, I think from a, from a viewer point of view, it's kind of the same thing you experience as a player, right? Where at first it's a lot of fun, uh, because it just seems so explosive. It's like, oh my god, like this guy just blew up, or like he just used Samurai LB and it, he he killed like four people. Oh, they they comboed the Dancer LB with the Dragoon LB, and they just wiped the enemy team. Uh, I think like when when you see that at first, it's like wow, like like this is actually really cool because um, it's it's really fun and it's and it's explosive. But after you kind of watch it week after week after week, you start to kind of notice some of these patterns, and and um, and it's not as exciting anymore um mm. i i still i still want to have an open mind because we're starting season two uh mm -hmm. today yeah in two hours <laughs> but uh uh so we'll see if maybe there's maybe teams have come up with some interesting new new strategies um but yeah okay. those are those are kind of my thoughts Right I mean, now. Yeah, when we were doing commentary for Feast, and uh, I mean, we put a lot of work into it. We put like months of just yeah, like months. trying to analyze and figure out like what the best way to commentate it uh, would be and everything else. And we right. were able to a point, right, to say, all right, well, we can see they put these debuffs up, they got these things going on, and you can kind of analyze it. But it was so, sometimes it was hard because like both teams were trying to kill each other at the same time. It's just like you could catch one that they're targeting, but then someone on the other team dies like immediately, and you're like, oh, fuck, I didn't even catch it. But now it seems like you yeah. don't even think about it. It's not even worth trying to analyze. You just. You. Because you can see the LBs of the players on either side, you just see like, okay, Monk LB's up. Someone's about to die. Because <laughs> like generally, even when you have LB, you're not really holding on to it because you want to get as many uses of it off within a game as possible. So like this, usually more, more often than not, and I'm sure like Next and Sir can also commentate, uh, can can also comment on this. But generally, you're, you're not really holding on to LBs. Like you, you generally you want to use it as fast as possible. So usually, when you see a team stacked on LBs or one player with an LB, like someone on the enemy team is probably going to die. Um, and it's very, it's a lot more telegraphed now to where, at least in my opinion, it's a lot more telegraphed to where you kind of know what's going to happen next. Okay. Uh, next, sir, you guys, that, that makes sense to both of you. Any different thoughts? Uh, I mean, there's, I guess it sounds like you guys just want more focus on a neutral game. I don't know if, if that well, makes sense. Is I, that familiar? In terms of like LBs, I think, I mean, like when you're looking at the enemy team and you're watching their LBs, do you guys play differently do you expect different things like you see a monk has an lb you're like okay well who are they going to pick the die and then how to recover from that like what's what's going through your head when you're watching lbs or do you Whenever, not, not watch them at all you're just like well no you, you always you always watch them no matter <laughs> okay. what uh i mean yeah it just depends on the on the game state who has who has lb and all that stuff sometimes i mean if the monk has lb you kind of just have to let them do whatever the fuck they're doing and try and focus someone else on their team so they can't like follow up mm. it's just it's very yeah it's very it just depends 
spins on what's going on. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I think uh, what Plus said is mostly true. There, there are some jobs that have LBs that you want to use at the right moment rather than immediately. Um, like, I, I can say Sage and Paladin are two jobs where you want to hold your LB for a good moment to use it. You don't want to pop your Paladin LB when no one's around because you're not going to give them the buff. Uh, Sage LB is a really good team fight LB. But those are also like, those are two minute LBs. Those are like the big ones that you have to wait a really long time for. And you don't have the liberty of being able to use them whenever you want. And uh, I think that's like a balance issue. Uh, you know, the really long LBs, some of them aren't as impactful immediately, uh, like some of the 60 second LBs are. And so you're forced to try and use them at the best moment rather than being able to use them whenever you want to do whatever yeah. you want. Yeah, and that means like Paladin gets one LB a match, right? Uh, depending on how much you're dying, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I've I've had matches where I've I you know you just die as a Paladin because of cover, and I get one LB with 45 seconds in the match remaining because I've just been dead, you know, the entire time, and just a lot of times nothing you can even do about it. Mm -hmm. uh, but if it means that you know other people on your team are living and they'll be able to use their LBs more, then that's cool by me i guess but uh it doesn't feel good to have like one lb in a match uh to have to try and use it like the perfect moment i gotcha yeah yeah um oh by the way i didn't tell you guys this at all uh we do ad breaks here on mog talk now oh yeah yeah every hour or so uh due to the twitch incentive program and everything i should have told you guys oh, way yeah. before the show about that uh but i figured this was a good time to do it uh <laughs> i'm so sorry i didn't bring it up before the show uh but it'll give us a second That's to kind of right. regroup and continue on uh so guys uh all hang on one second we're gonna take a quick break for the the twitch avenue stuff or twitch avenue twitch uh <laughs> ad revenue stuff <laughs> so hang tight uh you're gonna mute make sure i mute it properly this time hold on one second all right and we're back simple painless easy i mean by the way you might not see ads sometimes i don't know how twitch decides how they want to do ads or not but that way you see music or not see music you see music depending on what you took today uh but uh likely you just heard some music <laughs> there for a bit what's then, going on here i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Uh, and so we had our super secret conversation you guys will never know about. Um, but I think yeah. that... Uh, really Shame. important details. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Chris, man, I hate that name, dude. I, I, I That's just a random tangent. Yeah. Crystalline Conflict. Feast was just like, feast, feast. You just say it, feast. Crystalline Conflict. Then you say CC, and you're like, you're talking about crowd control? Because that's, that's a pretty good start taken. You remember how many times I messed up in the last Mog Talk in like November? Mm -hmm. It was uh, it, it was crystal crystal capture. <laughs> yeah, that's so much crystal better. capture. That is better <laughs> actually. Is. Capture. Yeah, I'm telling you, dude. You kind of just say capture, right? Yeah. 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 I think it actually makes more sense for like the game mode too. It does. True. It's more. It's it's more descriptive. Uh, they can't change it. They've already <laughs> bought into the name. You know what's funny? Uh, so, God, how far back was that? I had an interview with Yoshida, email interview, and I asked about PvP stuff. And this was, mm -hmm. like, when we were going to every single live letter. And we are just sitting there being like, all right, now's the time. That was, <laughs> that was such a brutal period of PvP. <laughs> Go to every live letter, stay up till 4 a.m., you get a single slide with a bullet point that says PvP update, and that's it. PvP it's update. Like, okay. Our next next live letter will go more into it, and it'll say, "Oh, oh well, next one will go into it," and it just kept going. Um, but yeah, no, we we had an interview uh, with him, and I was trying to get PvP information out of him, and he came. The one thing he said is, "We have a name for the new mode," and if I would have known <laughs> that. <laughs> <laughs> what the you know what was you know the name was uh for what the type of mode was and everything i might have i might have suggested 
crystal capture or something man yeah you know what 100 percent, i'm on board that is the name we should probably just start socializing that and only call it crystal capture from now on true good name yeah. telling you i think what's weird is that um when they initially announced it it was called crystal conflict what? and that was called crystalline conflict. it was yeah wait, wait wait wait. i thought it was crystal conflict right now and it used to be crystalline conflict no, it's the no. other way. Shit. It's called I mean, Crystalline Conflict. I, I don't think anyone calls it Crystalline Conflict. You know who Probably named not. this? Was it, was it um, uh, Koji? Did he name this? He's the only I one I could think he that does like all of the all of the naming. And I don't think he does all of it. He probably reviews Most all of it. it. He's in charge of it in some yeah. form. But uh, I would think, man, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to... That's gonna, you know what? If I ever get an interview with Yoshida again, I'm gonna say, don't you think <laughs> crystalline conflict is a little too much to to say? And you'd bit. have to ask him why did they change it? Because they changed it like a month before it came out. Like it was, it was the live letter. I think it was the part one or part two patch six point one live letter. This was in March, mm -hmm. and up until that point, it was it was gonna be crystal conflict. And then for whatever reason, during that live letter, they said the name is Crystalline Conflict. So, I, so like, I don't even know why they even adjusted the name. I'm curious now. What, what, what prompted them to add, like, to make it even longer? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> All right. Anyways, names of this mode, that, uh, things that we could have done better. Uh... <laughs> God damn. I do, I do, I'm going to say this. I do like the mode right now, even though we've said a whole bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. I haven't been able to see the high level stuff as much as I'm going to be able to see it tonight. Uh, tonight. Yeah, tonight we're going to see it over at the, the, is it, why do I keep wanting to call it Wolf's Cup? Is it because of the Aether Cup? Or is it, Wolf's I did, I will, well, I did have a Wolf's Cup. We had a Wolf's Cup. Yeah, in November last year. That's right. That's right. And this is Wolf's League, though. This is the league, yeah, because it's multiple weeks. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah whole know. season. There's been so many Afer Wolf things that like my name the naming conventions just get all blurred and mixed up. Uh I don't know. I'm excited <laughs> for it. Uh it'll who, be fun. So let's talk a little bit about it just for the fun of it. Uh what sure. what what teams do you have playing in the league right now? Obviously next and Sir. Season two. Not next this season. Ooh, okay. Want to? I don't know. I don't know if next cares to explain why. Um, sure. Next, go ahead. I'll just I'll just say time constraints. Okay. That that does that mean that your team's gonna lose? Well, they kind of <laughs> as, as soon as. <laughs> As soon as I said I wasn't playing, they kind of all pulled out. So oh, you guys did the the whole like the the Japanese raid team thing where you just completely just what the been hell that mean? What? You don't know about this stuff, like no. Uh, so when raiding uh, at least over the JP servers, if you have a group, instead of like kicking someone, like if there's an issue or something, instead of like kicking mm -hmm. someone out, they just disband the whole group and reform another group. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I think I think most people on the team just wanted to take a break for right now. I I ended up joining. Yeah. Like, the Australian team. Okay. Yeah, take a take a break. Kind of just wait for more changes. Mm -hmm. I guess. Let's see if they can mix it up a little bit. It's well, it's kind of like uh, the the game is designed. So it's like very it's so simple that it almost feels like like every every big patch cycle it, it almost feels like they should just completely redesign it every single patch cycle to keep it interesting. Mhm. Mm Cuz okay, okay. I mean I feel like I feel like we kind of figured it out like in a week, you know? It's kind of crazy. Like you even though there's so many, out? you don't think that there's like any room to move. Like it's, no, no I mean, it's, it's possible. I mean, I, I'll, I'll watch the, the Wolves League tonight, see what's mm -hmm. going on. But, I mean, 
I don't know. It's it's kind of I guess it is kind of hard to say, but okay. okay. Uh, I just I, I wish if if they're gonna make it like this, it'd be nice if they have more more changes, like more frequent changes, to okay. keep it keep it interesting. But that's well, I mean, just me, obviously. Do I mean we we already are triple the maps we had before? That's that's like a huge <laughs> True. variety and change that we we're starting to experience. And um, no one wants to play on one of them. The, is this it the is wind one? Is that the one we're talking yeah. about? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, isn't it? Uh, I mean, have you ever have you ever seen anything like that in a video game, dude? Where it just like I've, you I've, off. I've, well, I've never played like a like a video game that's like PvP or whatever, and it has a mechanic where everybody in the game loses sixty percent of their HP for no reason. <laughs> it's I love it's it. kind of crazy. I love it. I, I really do. I, I think that it's just, it's something you have to think about. It's something that makes like the engagement a little bit different, right? It's not just the exact same thing on the, a, a different looking map. Um, and so I, I guess I, I like it. I, I, you I know mean, what? obviously you can use guard or whatever, but it's like, then you don't have guard. Yeah. It's it just decision. seems so, cr it's so crazy, man. It's just so much, so much damage. Mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I don't know. I, I haven't seen that. I know WoW, I, can, I haven't kept up with a lot of WoW uh, PvP stuff, but I know back in the day when they were doing a lot of the arena stuff and everything, they had some maps that did some funny, goofy stuff, but I don't think they had anything like this, right? Um, it's crazy. Nah. It's, it's pretty extreme. It's, if it was like 30% of your HP, sure. And the tornado spawn afterwards. To, like, Dude, the tornadoes them. are bullshit, <laughs> You're man. Trying to like potion back up. After you it's throw ridiculous. The, air, the tornado comes to knock you out. Dude, it does. So, it goes through guard, and like it does like fifteen thousand damage. Yeah. So, so let me. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you one thing I like about it. I mean, I, I haven't been playing obviously as long as you guys have with this new mode, but like when you are thrown up into the air. You get to take a second, right, and just think. And you're, like, looking at everyone's health pools. You're looking at what needs to happen as soon as everyone hits the ground. You're, you're having a second of just, like, all right, I need to prep for exactly what needs to happen as soon as we all hit the ground. Uh, Thinking about that Dragoon LB that's about to hit you for 37,000 damage. <laughs> <laughs> Instantly yeah. kill you. There's another issue with the map in that you can get server ticked out of, like, catching the feather in the air. Like, you can run to the, like, the safe zone. Oh, yeah. And you'll get knocked up, and you'll be right on top of it, but the server's like, nah, you didn't make it in time, even though you you did on your screen. And so you just, yeah. you see your character fly through the feather, and it, you don't pick it up, and you fall back on the down ground, you take the damage, and then you probably die. I mean, that's that's just Final Fantasy fourteen PvP, dude. True. Yeah. <laughs> that's... Which, I, which I guess you can say is another issue. Why do they keep quit, like, you know, making the pace of this game faster and faster and faster when the net code, like, cannot deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? Okay, why, okay. why do they want to make a super high-octane fast-paced game mode when, like, you pop guard, you still take 40,000 damage through it before, like, it starts working? Mm -hmm. You know, I do have, like, a, a little opinion that is completely offbeat and everything is that I, I want Final Fantasy 14 PvP just to be like Final Fantasy Tactics PvP. One versus one, you have the little armies, and that's literally it. Just scratch, like, <laughs> scratch actual like PvP like it is right now and go like a whole different route of turn based type PvP. Uh, because that Dude, that stuff's always servers. super unbalanced, though. <laughs> like, did you ever like. Like, can't you can't you like link up or whatever on like the GBA version or something and like fight each other? And I it's think like, so. it's always like. Like someone has like an assassin that's like level fucking ninety nine or something. He's just running around like one shotting everything. Like, how old were you the last time you did that though? Right? I, like, <laughs> wait, are you saying you want more of that in your life? No. What I'm saying is that, like, <laughs> at that point in your life, you might not know what being good was, uh, and so you might not have understood the meta of the oh. back in the day. I'm oh, okay. saying your that's opinion saying. is invalid. Uh, you're saying there's some untapped depth in the tactics of <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but no, I, I do think uh, it would be interesting. It, it, it's stupid, like, uh, again, offbeat opinion here. Uh, this turn-based PvP would work out a lot better for Final no, Fantasy no, Don't call it stupid, man. I think you're on to something. 
I don't know, man. It would no one would complain about server ticks anymore. <laughs> It'd be it's done true. With. True. Yeah. yeah. The mechanics of the game and this, you know, the spaghetti code in the background, it, it would never be part of the conversation. It'd just be what plays are being made. Uh, I mean, Hearthstone does really good. That's that's turn based, but hmm. So triple triad. Yeah. Triple but it's triad. played in the crystalline conflict map. That would be a good idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think there isn't enough depth to triple triad. Unfortunately, it's hmm. it it gets kind of like tic tac toe ish. Uh, but okay. mahjong apparently. Everyone. Oh, true. Oh my gosh. <laughs> on crystal okay on on the crystal data center almost all of the like well a decent amount of like the really dedicated feast players from last expansion i mean they have not a lot of them like crystal conflict they're playing it very you know minimally and they're they're, they're just playing mahjong now dude they they've moved on to the better pvp they're they're, they're playing mahjong they're they're enjoying it they're hosting party finders and they're uh they're having a good time Oh man, I feel bad. Like I, I don't want to have a show where we just kind of shit all over this because I feel like we've done a lot of it. We <laughs> haven't been like given enough of the, like the props to the mode because the mode has a lot of good stuff with it still. I think. Wait, crystalline conflict? Yeah, crystalline conflict. Yeah. I don't, I don't think we're shitting on it. You don't Are think we? so? I feel like we've had, we have a lot during this show so far. I think it's like, well, isn't it kind of like constructive? At least it's kind of like it is constructive. It could be this or it could be that. It is constructive, you're right. There is that. Uh, I mean, I, I think there is a lot of promise for this mode. Uh, and I'm excited, you know, personally, all right? And so I'm dedicating myself with my extra time right now to get familiar with the mode and trying to, like... And I don't have a lot of it, but guys, <laughs> I don't have a lot of extra time. But I'm spending a lot of time trying to make sure I can investigate it and see where this goes in the future, because I've been such, like intertwined with the final fantasy 14 pvp uh saga that has been in this game for so long that i do want to see where it ends up and i do want it to succeed and be like amazing in the end um Same. and you know and i i'm still going to try for it i'm still going to put effort into it and uh i do think 100 percent it is really unhealthy to like just do this whole thing where we only say good things about things because we want it to succeed i think it's important to say the constructive things, although it does sometimes come off as jaded, like criticism of the mode versus like, yeah, uh, the constructive side of it. But yeah, that's fair. Um, yeah, and I I do think they they Square Enix uh, there is an opportunity here for them, and they have put. You can't say they haven't put a lot of work into Crystalline Conflict, right? They put a lot into. Oh yeah, it. they absolutely have. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. It's it's the most Hunt. it's the most work we've seen in PvP in a very long time ever um, <laughs> ever. ever yeah I mean yeah. I, I like when they first announced it I was honestly shocked at how much stuff it was it was launching with yeah I mean I, they they really did put a lot of effort into it and it, like I said at the start of the podcast I mean I don't think the mode is bad mm -hmm. I, I I really don't I I think it's a good mode um it, there just needs to be work I think on the on the job kit side to make playing the mode uh, a healthier experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, and I think so. And they, they have the beginning figured out. And I think this is something that actually is, it would make sense to me, uh, is that they're capturing a lot of the community interest right now. There's a lot of people wanting to play it. I queue up, it takes me two seconds to queue up. Do you know how great that feels, man? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's one of the best parts. Yeah, I, I think I think Sir loves that. Yeah, I mean, going from like yeah. literally having to wait forty five minutes for a feast queue sometimes, or even four hours for a feast queue, to being able to get a pop pretty much at any time in Crystal Rank is is really good. You can't be productive uh, though during it. Like you can't do side stuff on the side. You have to. You're like, oh well, I'm queuing up. I'm playing PvP. That's what you're doing. It yeah. used to be back in PvP. You're like, all right, I queue up. All right, I'm gonna go write a novel real quick. Right, I'm gonna go <laughs> do something. Go watch a movie. Yeah, uh, <laughs> especially if you're a range. I think range. Oh, that, that was that was rough back in the day. Uh, but yeah, the queues, the queue times are so good. 
Uh, and I'm, I'm doing low rank queues right now, by the way, guys. I think what I'm silver something. It is kind of weird. I don't feel pressure. I, I kind of do, but not really when I queue up. Because if I lose, worst case scenario is I'll be at the bottom of silver. Right? If I'm in silver. Yeah, they, they, they like, dude, they like nailed the, um, like, queue up addiction. Yeah. For sure. Like yeah. people, <laughs> they like nailed the whole like nonstop queue up design. It's mm -hmm. pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah, they they definitely uh they eliminated some of the bad parts of feast where you would wait two hours for a queue, you would get into a match, you would lose in a minute, and then you got to wait two hours while you're just seething about the points <laughs> you just lost, you know, because you got a, a melee who didn't do countdowns or whatever. Yeah, yeah and so yeah. they they did a good job of getting rid of that. Mm -hmm. Um, to be to say that like the ranking experience is better is probably to be decided still I think uh, mm -hmm. not having demotions and stuff like that is kind of bad long term but at the same time with the way this is designed I don't think you can add dem demotions into this and have it be good no. I think a lot of your agency in solo queue is like kind of out of your hands now at least for some jobs i mean some jobs you can you can do a really good job with but like i i think adding demotions is not a good thing because like it's not uncommon for like a crystal rank player to lose like 1500 points in one day i think it's happened to literally everyone like you will just lose all your games in a day and you'll just have a massive dip in your points and yeah. uh I, I don't think adding demotions or even rank decay is even something you can think of right now with how the mode is uh, designed. Right, right. Oh, man. Yeah, and so, God, I almost, I kind of forgot a little bit what <laughs> was going on, but we're on the ranking system here. I do want to ask you how the in-game ranking on a ladder feels right now. Like, when you go into a match, does it feel like it's the same match every single time, or does it feel like it, it varies? I guess was from from my experience it varies okay. a lot. Like I didn't really see like the same names over and over and over again. Okay. But I I didn't really play as much solo queue as Sir, so I think he should answer. Yeah. Um uh, <laughs> So season one it was pretty varied. That that that's when the most people were playing. But right now, I mean you get the same people in your matches. Over and over and over again. Just like Feast, uh, you'll get stuck in the same queue with the same group of people, and you'll get them over and over again unless you like intentionally desync your queue from them. And even if you do that, you might get them again. So we've reached a point now where some of the same issues with Feast are kind of starting to kind of crop up. Uh, mm. And we have to see what happens moving forward i know that they said in the live letter that they're planning on making it so you can't like get synced up or whatever in your queues mm -hmm. but i don't know how that's gonna work if there's only 10 people in queue because we've reached that point a couple times on crystal i know like in the like at night time where there's only 10 people that can pop the queue and you're just you're just gonna get them over and over again yeah. and so i don't know how a system like that would work uh having it so you can't get matched up with people if those are the only people in queue is it just going to like kill the queue earlier than it needs to, or, or what? Hmm. Good thought. Plus, do you have any thoughts on it? I have a lot of thoughts about solo queue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. uh, although, although it might uh, go down a different avenue than, than, than the current discussion. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. Um, so I don't know if you want to ask next first. Well, next, sorry, he already answered, really, on that. Okay, was, okay. Yeah. Nothing more? Nothing really too much, I don't think, next, right? Uh, I don't think so. It was just about uh, if you're seeing, like, the same, the same people over and over again, right? Oh, my God, you almost said fucking. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ, that would have been so rough. All right. Yeah, <laughs> trying to save everyone's ears. Appreciate it. Um, I think like before anything else, it all comes down to the fundamental issue we've been having for the past six years of wind traders, griefers, 
and other people polluting the cues. Because, okay. uh, and like, Sir can also probably comment, well, maybe not specifically Sir, but just in general, there was an issue uh, in season one where a couple of the of of the data centers, I won't say specifically which ones, uh, but a couple of the data centers, the rank one players who got there did not get there legitimately. Mm. So Wait, this season, is an issue. Season one of feast or crystal conflict. Season one of crystalline conflict. Ah oh, shit. So this is still like an ongoing issue, and I think like at the very basic level, that's something that they absolutely need to address before like anything else because if if even with the current system people are still finding ways to um exploit it without punishment wait um, like they like actually got rank one yes the wind traders yeah <laughs> what the fuck? yeah I, I would even go to say that it's much easier to cheat in this mode than it was in feast mm. it's it's actually yeah. much easier to i thought they were like banning wind traders uh, it, it's no. the same thing every time they ban one person, everyone congratulates Square Enix on doing a good job, the and thing it's is, business as usual after that. The um, problem is, uh, the player who got banned, because there was, again, I won't, I won't say specific names or like which data center, but there was a player who was rank one on a data center who got banned. But the reason they got banned was not for win trading. It was because in the game, they said in, in game that something about selling their account, and that you know, mm. was what uh, triggered the ban. It wasn't <laughs> nice. even the win trade itself. Uh, it wasn't even the win trading activity itself, even though there were countless people reporting it. Um, so that's just something like, I think even, even before they even touched the matchmaking or anything else, that's just something that just has to be addressed. You know what I'm saying? Because that's, at the end of the day, that's really what turns off a lot of, a lot of the players that are really putting the hours, putting in the time to uh you know try to climb is when they encounter other players that are bypassing them um illegitimately mm. and it feels bad you know what i'm saying like it it never it never feels good to um have that happen and this is something that unfortunately players are still dealing with um and and this is something i noticed especially to um i'm a part of staff uh of of i'm i'm a staff member on pvp revival which is a great great discord for, uh, especially for like new players coming into PvP. But as a staff member, I, I usually see all the tickets come in. And so many of the tickets are like win trading, griefing, all this stuff. Um, and it's usually repeat offenders because unfortunately the players aren't getting any action taken against them. Um, and that's mm -hmm. leading to more players thinking that they can do the same thing without punishment. But it's one of those things where like, even, even if Square Enix doesn't locate every single person who's win traded or who is win trading and bans them, it doesn't. It doesn't even need to be to that extent. You know, just sending the message out there, banning like I don't know a couple of the main offenders would do so much to discourage other people who either are doing the same thing or who may be thinking of doing the same thing. It would discourage them enough to stop doing it. At least a lot of them. Some of them don't don't care if, if they get banned, but a lot of them put a lot of time into their accounts and the thought of them of their accounts getting terminated they wouldn't they wouldn't want that to happen so it's just one of those things where it's just like very very little little things little bits of action that i think square Enix can do would really improve the solo queue experience outside of any matchmaking you know algorithm um balance job balancing gameplay adjustments all that stuff i think just addressing like one of the fundamental issues that people are dealing with right now um, is definitely very, very important. Okay. I think there's, a, there's another issue with the mode where, unlike Feast, where in a diamond match, I mean, when you got into a diamond match in Feast, it felt like a, a game. Even if you lost terribly, like the flow of the game was still there. But in Crystal Conflict, I mean, it is so hard to tell even if someone's like just intentionally trying to run it down and lose the game, or they're just having a bad match. It, it's it, it's almost impossible to tell if someone's like griefing now or if they're just playing bad and i think that makes the whole situation worse because now you you can't even tell if someone is just intentionally trying to throw your game or they're just having you know a, a, a terrible day the 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 varying 
quality of matches in Crystal is uh, it's 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 wild, honestly. And I think that just makes it harder to punish people who are you know bad actors because there's no definitive proof now that you can really point to to be like this isn't legitimate play uh unless they're like literally doing zero damage zero healing but even then like i've seen ranked games where someone does like less than fifty thousand damage because they just get blown up over and over and over again and it's not most yeah so so i i think you know what i said earlier like they've almost made it easier to cheat in this mode because it's way less identifiable if you're like if you're acting poorly and like intentionally trying to run it down or if you're doing something malicious and and or just having a bad game, so Who, that's Wait sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Someone's saying plus. Oh, plus is Mike. I don't know why. I, I, is, oh, the bass is my is my volume too loud compared, compared to other people? Uh, no, your volume's about. I think the it same. sounds fine. Yeah, sounds fine. Okay. Yeah, I have you guys all capping and hitting right for the red, so it's not getting into red. Uh, so you, you're all hitting around the same points. Uh, now plus it's going to go listen to the channel and try to analyze and then like, mm -hmm. <laughs> so his base, his base is good. Uh, good. Okay. Well, for me it is. I'm not, I, I, I'm not actually adding anything. It's just, just the voice. The voice, man. Um, but that being said, yeah, no, uh, sir, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, <laughs> I was just trying to keep up. With that. <laughs> that's, that's it. I mean, I okay. I think uh, if if bad actors want to be bad actors, I think they can in this mode, and they can do it easier than mm -hmm. feast. Uh, there's no threat of demotion, um, so you can always you can just sit at zero points and just grief people all day if like if you really wanted to, which is I I think terrible. At the same time, though, you can't add demotion to this mode because people go on two thousand point swings all the time and like. Yeah, it it would be incredibly frustrating getting demoted when games are out of your control as often as they are in uh hmm. in solo queue to a certain degree. Frosty, so, do you... uh, oh yeah. sorry, sorry. Uh, I I just wanted to ask Frosty, do do you know why? Um, I I'm just wondering if you know why or not, or if if not, if not, I can explain or like we can explain. Do you know why? Uh, when trading right now is is uh, easier to do. Because uh, if you both queue up as the same job, you're not going to get in the same team. Is that what you, you mean? That's that's one part of it. The other part of it is what Sir was saying regarding the demotions. Is that you once you hit crystal, you cannot demote. Right. So you can lose an unlimited number of games, and you're still going to be crystal. You're you're still going to be able to match with the same people. Mm -hmm. no, that um, makes sense. So, and and this is something kind of some players have noticed too at least i'm not sure how it is now as much in season two but in season one people kind of noticed like the second people hit crystal they they just started rainbowing playing other jobs not not really taking the mode as seriously because you don't have anything to lose mm. um yeah who, who and, would do and, that sir <laughs> sir oh, i'm totally guilty i'm totally guilty of okay 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 yeah, so 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 that's also a thing with you know griefers and like other things too is you know unfortunately because you can't demote, um, they can just keep doing it uh, mm -hmm. because they're not going to lose rating and unfortunately the level of moderation, in my opinion, is not where it should be to you know. I mean that's not kinda... an opinion. That's that's a straight fact. Uh... Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm just I'm just I'm just I'm just trying to be nice. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. saw that all throughout the year. Yeah, the moderation is not there. Yeah, so uh, that that's something that I, I still think is just such a big, such a big factor. I, I remember we we talked about it in like the previous mod talks too. But it's like, if Grainix does want to take the mode seriously, this is absolutely something they need to like dive headfirst in, trying uh -huh. to tackle. Again, it doesn't have to be anything sweeping, but even just you know getting rid of one or two of the big offenders just to send a message that stuff like this isn't okay mm -hmm. is really important. And, and we've seen that be an effective strategy they've used in the past. Um, I think we, we noticed that with, for example, um, well, this isn't really app, like apples to apples here, but if you look at like the character portrait situation where people were doing not safe for work character portraits, 
a few people got banned. People got the message. Wait a minute. I don't want to be banned. Let me stop doing that. And then, you know, people stopped doing it. Yeah. No, and so, I, I think uh, kind of what ties into all this, too, is that people are actually kind of afraid of those bands. There's just some people who, who won't be, right? Uh, yeah. But at the same time, most people want these rewards on their main account. They don't want it on some exactly. off random account and then sell it. I mean, somebody might buy it, but like it'll be an account with one reward on it for PvP. And you're like, well, shit, uh, am I ever going to play it or do anything with it? Not yeah. really. Uh, so, yeah, if you do actually ban people, uh, I think that it would do a lot of work. Uh, but And they have tools. They can develop tools for this stuff, right? Where they can analyze, all right, this player was in this match. And uh, every time this player is in a match with this other person, their uh, taps per minute go down or their actions per minute are like, there's so many little analytical things they can do with how they interact and they press keys and they do their motions and everything. That's just tools that you would build. Uh, and they can get an inconsist or a, a consistent uh, change that happens when this other player ha uh, is playing. And they can- I think them. like- Honestly, it, it almost doesn't even need to be like that. Like that would all be great. But I think it almost doesn't even need to be that advanced in this situation. Like I think even something as simple as like if we receive X amount of reports of win trading or griefing or whatever on, on a given player, we send a GM to go to, you know, spectate them um, while they're invisible. Go go through like spend like, I don't know, 30 minutes or whatever watching them play in these solo queue games. And see, you know, like, are they because usually you can you can kind of tell um, sometimes you can, as 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 Sir said, sometimes it's kind of hard to tell uh, just based on how like snowballing the games are. But like sometimes you, it's it's very it's very apparent. I mean, you like look at the scoreboards and sometimes it can be very, very uh, cut and dry. Who's 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 win trading, who's griefing and like, mm -hmm. who is it? Yeah. Uh, and even if like they did do the thing where they're like, all right, well, uh, we will make it to where you only get one character per account that can be on a leaderboard or something like that. That would, that'd be a step that would help, but there are still some people who are like, I'm just gonna help my friend. I don't care about PVP. Uh, and they'll, they'll get in there and they'll help them kind of rank up and do all that crazy crap. But, uh, the other thing to talk about, I guess, in the ranking of solo queue is it, anyone can be crystal. Literally anyone could be crystal, right? There, there's nothing that stops anyone from getting to crystal if you have enough coin flips. Does that sound yep. right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. I think uh, looking at those like achievement websites, like where you can see like the statistics of achievements. Yeah. Like of the people that were visible, I think like forty percent of people got crystal, which is like yeah. not a proper bell curve at all for like player skill. Like right. no way should that be a thing. But uh keeps the cues alive so i mean it's like a double-edged sword you know do you want quality matches or do you want to be able to get matches it's true yeah yeah more people got crystal than any other tier <laughs> and, and not only that but the the amount of people who got crystal and in, in some cases was was more than two of the other tiers combined so wow. yeah. yeah and crystal's not com crystal compared to the feast uh it was something where oh, it was something only like less than 10 percent of the people who had feast tier achievements got diamonds which was the highest rank in in the feast mm. so hmm that's pretty funny and, and you could get diamond in feast with a less than 40 like a like a less than 50 percent win rate yeah you so can. <laughs> but it is a lot more work and uh you know to get to it i would think yeah um yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, I, I do, again, these are just mild constructive complaints that hopefully, you know, they take the heart and they do something. There are some things that are going to completely kill the mode, like the non-moderation. Uh, they do need to put some level yeah. of, like, actual moderation in there. Or after a few seasons, that's just literally, you're going to brand it just the way we brand it Feast. <laughs> right? Uh, the mode is, you might not be able to say it, but you'll know it. Crystalline yeah. conflict. Yeah, you'll be able to relate it to just win trading and everything else and that's ex i'm gonna be honest when you come out with a new pvp mode people are gonna be able to take advantage of all the little gimmicks and crap um so it, it's one of those things 
to where they're still in a good spot. They just got to start taking action, and we'll see if they do, uh, you know, in these upcoming seasons and everything else. <sighs> Jesus Christ, all those caps locks, man. <laughs> I, I, I think that's a good point. I mean, he's talking about rewards. Yeah, we can maybe yeah. talk about rewards. Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, you know what? Just because this guy put all caps lock, we're going to talk about <laughs> rewards here. So let's talk about the rewards okay. and how they are in the, the game right now. Uh, who wants to start that off? I can start. Okay. I'm, I'm, I might be the most constructive, mm -hmm. maybe. So, first of all, I, I would like to say, because someone mentioned, I think it was you, Frosty, earlier today, who mentioned uh, about the PvP series, mm -hmm. which is different than the season, but the PvP series where you have that, like, battle pass, and, you know, it's like, like, like you're working towards that. Mm -hmm. I think, first of all, even though this is a, a little bit unrelated, but still related, they need to absolutely make that like five to ten times harder or more. Yeah, five to ten times harder to complete because okay. a lot of the hardcore PvP players finished it in a day. Literally 24 hours One was day. done. One day for a what was supposed to be a four month long PvP series. They did it in one day. So, yeah, I think yeah, to keep rough. people playing and to keep people, you know, because at the end of the day, for the majority of the player base, they're only playing it for the reward. Mm -hmm. So if people can just kind of go in, do it in one day, that's not going to help the life ban of PvP in general. Mm -hmm. um, so... I think making that longer, like, I, I think the reward they gave for the PvP series was great. Like, it, it was that armor. I have a feeling that armor probably would have been a, like, top 100 reward, but they just put it into the PvP series to make it attainable by everyone. Mm -hmm. um, but I think being able to get that in one day, it's like, like, like they should have definitely <sighs> made that a bit, a bit, a little bit harder to get. Right? Okay. Um, in regards to the Season rewards, I think having a portrait plate where the only thing that changes is the Roman numeral is not going to get people to continue playing the mode. I'm hoping that it's kind of like the feast where with, with the feast we had, you know, it, the reward changed every other season. So mm -hmm. I'm hoping maybe with season three, there will be somewhat of a different reward, but I think if they do what they what they've done from season one to season two for all the future season, it's it's not it's not going to be good for the participation. Um, I don't think people are interested enough just for a player portrait, um, and and also the the players who did previously get those portraits, um, I don't think they'd be incentivized enough to keep playing just to have one with an extra Roman numeral on it. That's true. I mean, you would almost could argue like having the earlier Roman numerals made you look cooler versus having the, the most recent ones. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I'm hoping they start to change it up next season. Maybe. I'm not sure. But, okay. you know, we'll have to see. Next, sir, any other thoughts on uh, rewards? Uh, I'm not really one to ask about this. <laughs> because, <laughs> I mean, of the, of the characters that I climbed with to, to like, Crystal, I mean, I haven't even logged in on them to, to <laughs> okay. claim it yet, so, uh, yeah. All right, all right. He's a, he's a light party gamer. Gotcha. But uh, yeah, I think I think plus hit the nail on the head there. Uh, I think the series rewards the battle pass is fantastic. I like how they essentially moved the the big top one hundred feast reward to that. I think making that more accessible was a good thing. But uh, you complete it way too quickly, and uh, the actual ranked rewards for Crystal Conflict are. They're 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 not going to hold people's attention long term. Uh, 
the, the, they're doing it right now because people might be wanting to still get top 30, uh, maybe even just place top 100. But over time, they're just going to be less and less incentivizing to uh, to to play, to play for. So uh, that needs to change. But at the same time, uh, with how the mode plays in solo queue, I don't think you can add like super exclusive, you know, crazy armor sets or crazy mounts to top 100 because it, it's going to be a, a, an apocalypse uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if they if they do that. That's fair. Uh, I, I don't think solo queue, just with how it plays right now, I mean, we talked about this for the last hour, but like, uh, I, it's not in a state where I think you can be adding rewards like that to. Uh, I would like for them to make the environment a little better gameplay wise before they want to consider adding, you know, better, you know, more crazy rewards to uh, the solo queue rankings. Because people, people will play ranked even if like the reward isn't that good. So long as the gameplay is good, but if the gameplay isn't good long term and the reward isn't good long term, there's no reason to play it long term. And what's going to happen is people are just going to show up for the new series reward, max out their battle pass, and they're going to dip. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And and you can already see, you know, participation right now is lower than it was at the start when we had a new battle pass. And so my concern is that uh, in the future you're going to have a surge of players coming back for the new battle pass. They'll max it out in however long. And then activity will die down. And that second season, that second ranked season where the battle pass has been out for the entire previous one, uh, I'm worried that in the future that's going to be like the low population season where queues are really slow and you get the same people over and over again. And it's just going to be a very frustrating environment. So it's like, yeah, I want better rewards for ranked and stuff, but I don't think you can do that right now with how the game plays and they got to they got to adjust that first before they go back into it. But they absolutely do need to do something there to keep people's attention long term. Yeah. One other thing I want to say, um, because they made the change, which a lot of people did actually request this change to be made regarding um, you receiving all of the previous rewards and achievements below your current tier or rank. So like if you get diamonds or sorry, if you get crystal, you'll unlock diamonds platinum and like everything below i think in some ways that is actually like obviously it makes sense why they did it but in other ways i think that's part of the reason why we're also not seeing or or why there may be a a decline in the level of participation because once you kind of get to the top you unlocked everything you're done and then you can just stop playing and like focus on like other um aspects of the game but that does also kind of come back to what Sir was saying is that at the end of the day, it does, it does always come down to how much fun are you actually having playing? Because mm-hmm. like, if you only care about the rewards, there's a lot of reasons not to keep playing. Um, if that's, if that's the only reason why you're there, but honestly, mm-hmm. from observing the PVP community for the past six years, that is the reason why a lot of the players are there. A lot of them honestly just kind of care about the rewards, you know, like, um, Sir, and I and you, Frosty, and next to an extent, do enjoy the gameplay. But you know, a lot of people are just are just there for the rewards. Um, the other thing too that that I just wanted to bring up because someone actually put a um, Capulum actually posted a, a good comment as well, which is that the better the rewards. So so what he said was the better the rewards, the more people will be no, will, will be motivated to cheat, which wouldn't be a problem with more proactive moderation. But you know, that's not what we have now. Yeah. Um, so. It's kind of like one of those things. Um, I do. I do actually wonder what would happen if they did put a very enticing reward one of these seasons for like top one hundred. Um, how well that will, how well that season will turn out from a, you know, um, moderation point of view. Mm-hmm. I do. Uh, you know, one other thing to consider here outside of rewards, you know, needing to keep people encouraged playing. If there's other modes, like they are going to do stuff like the, even chat was saying here, is rival wings and everything else. Uh, yep. They start adding in these new modes that people want to play. Are people going to want to play Crystalline Conflict? Yeah, that's that's another thing too. I mean, if, if rival wings is really fun, front lines is really fun. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, like me, me, 
me personally, um, and I think next next is also the same way. I greatly prefer Light Party over Solo Queue. I think Light Party is actually still a lot of fun. I think it's honestly it's it's always been this way, even even with the feast. Um, it's just a lot more enjoyable when like you're able to be on voice with your team and like work together, develop strategies, communicate, and try to you know get as much out of the mode as you can. Versus Solo Queue, it's it's just it's it's not as it's not as engaging. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Light Party. I do wonder the best approach. Um, I've I I have a few ideas, but I do wonder at at the current time, just based on the moderation point of view, whether even a light party season could be a thing right now. Because I am still very concerned about if they do have a light party season and they have specific rewards for it. How many people would try to rank up or place um, illegitimately? through win trading or like anything else because that that was an issue we had in some previous light party seasons with the feast and i do wonder um whether they whether square enix will decide to move forward with potentially a light party season given those concerns especially if they're not going to double down on moderation Mm. um because that, that 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 would be a big issue i think tournaments hosting like official tournaments may be the better approach over like a light party season i think regular mm-hmm. official tournaments if they're down to do it may make more sense um i think the the eu tournament that they had recently um was very interesting it was it was very it was very 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 basic like it was best of ones which you know isn't really the most mm-hmm. ideal for a tournament but i think it was it was a good it was a good start i'm glad to see that they did have a tournament rather yeah. than no tournament mm-hmm. um but you know hopefully i think in regards to uh light party and rewards from that i think tournaments may be uh, more official tournaments may be the better approach rather than like a ongoing light party season okay uh so i do want to ask this because i i know we we did the show a little bit earlier just to make sure we weren't we could have not too many conflicts with like the wolf's league that's coming up tonight and everything else uh sure. when do you need to start working on that plus pretty soon right um i mean i can i it's it's pretty much ready to go oh okay so we got so, a little bit more time yeah i mean i mean, I mean if you want to go another 30 minutes yeah let's do that do uh, uh next sure. sir you guys good for another 30 minutes or so i'm good all right yeah let's do an ad break real quick uh okay. <laughs> and then we'll come right back and we'll wrap up the show with uh the last bits of uh pvp talk all right guys hold tight let me see if i can do this right break screen <laughs> all right welcome back everybody uh thanks for hanging out for that break or so that we had it's it's real quick. It still feels awkward. I don't think I'm ever going to get used to it. I've never did ads before, but uh, might as well. Um, that being said, we got about 30-ish minutes or so left to talk about PvP with Final Fantasy XIV. And I guess we were talking a little bit about this before we went to break, uh, about you know new modes coming out that could uh, cause issues with crystal crystalline conflict. Um, because I mean that that is the competitive tournament based mode, right? They're not going to go rival wings and say, "Hey, we're going to go really hardcore and do tournaments for that," or any other they kind could. of front lines. You think so? I think they could. It's yeah. too many well, people. Well, the thing is, I, you couldn't I, get that many people to yeah. on a team. I mean, I'd have wings. to see. I'm really curious to see how it's going to play with the new PvP system. I know they're making specific adjustments to write like the reason why it wasn't ready at launch for 6.1 was because they had to readjust all the numbers for the robots and everything uh but i am i am curious how they're going to make these adjustments especially factoring in the lbs and you know how to scale those um appropriately based on the mode but yeah yeah i'm hoping rival wings is is good yeah that would be fun i i enjoyed it i enjoyed it before it, it was definitely interesting. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people were really into it, just couldn't keep it the mode alive in general because uh, there just was not enough people. 
Uh, but... Yeah, without the without the Moogle Mog Tome events. Yeah. It usually, it usually our Discord's pop. dedicated to popping it, right? Yeah. Um, and so I think that it is. It's going to be interesting to see what they can do. I do like those kind of modes. I like CG stuff. I like getting in robots and being stupid and, you know, not having to take it seriously. Uh, I don't take any front lines or anything seriously. I know <laughs> people do, <laughs> but it's so hard for me to do it. Um, because that, that's what I liked about Feast is that I felt like, all right, I'm one fourth of this match, 25%, probably less or more, depending on the role you're playing, uh, completely matters on what you're doing. Um, in uh, Crystalline Conflict, not as much. I mean, when you get into Light Party, it's a little bit different, of course, because that's pure coordination. You can't really claim, oh, I died because someone was, oh, my team sucks. I mean, you can, but you chose that team. You know, <laughs> you, you're on there for, uh, in your own, uh, for your own reasons. When uh, you're in solo queue, it's all kind of random. And so when you get in there and... Uh, Crystalline Conflict's a little bit worse than Feast right now with that, where you don't feel like you have as much power in it. But when you get into Rival Wings and you get into all this other stuff, kind of the same thing. I don't know. Uh, that's always how I felt. But I still enjoyed not being goofy in the mode because that's, in the end, I can't take it seriously, so might as well get in a robot and blow people up. Yeah. I don't know if you guys feel that way, but that's usually how I felt about it. I mean, the, ro the robots Rival are Rival wings. That's like the best part of it. <laughs> yeah. In yeah. my opinion, even though it's not the best part of it to, I think, most PvP players' opinions, but yeah. <laughs> it's still fun. I played a few yeah, matches like of it. it. <laughs> it interesting. Next. It's, it's definitely yeah. a uh, for fun mode. Yeah. I, I yeah. didn't know what was going on. I was just confused the whole time. <laughs> there was just like tanks Two on the ground that people up. were picking up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and like it's like, oh, the train comes four minutes into the match. You got to be there. <laughs> like, all this crazy shit. I'm like, all right. Uh, I do like it, though. I mean, and there's like, there's a boss that spawns and you got to go kill him or, you know, it's yeah. who kills it. I, there's a lot of cool stuff with it. Uh, it's an interactive map. Um, it kind of reminded me a little bit. Did you, any of you guys play WoW PvP at all? A little I, bit. I mean, uh, all of us. A very small amount. Like, yeah. In the, no, the Giga they're, Boomer they're, days, they're uh, they oh. they they played it a lot. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Uh, it kind of had those that same feeling of like, hey, you interact with the map and you get an advantage and you use that advantage. Like, oh, what was it, Ultra Rock Valley, the very first like huge forty man? <laughs> yes. <whatever. laughs> yeah, you go kill. I, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know which one is more confusing, dude. <laughs> really? Between Maybe. the two. AV's definitely yeah, probably, probably AV, yeah. yeah. There's, there's like <laughs> mines. There's like all kinds of random crap in the map. Um, Go to the enemy base, kill the rams, like collect their ram skin to turn. And then you spawn the army. <laughs> then you spawn the giant like elemental thing. Mm. Dude, I had dial up. And I played Altrak Valley, and like if I got near too many people, I DC. So I would literally just like stay in a fucking cave. <laughs> and just like kill things in the cave oh man i remember that back in the day i had yeah i ran dial up too uh for quite a while and every time my parents would pick up a phone i would be real <laughs> pissed off dude <laughs> i just remember av matches lasting like whole days yeah like like longer yeah. than a day like you would you would you'd be playing in it and then you'd like go to sleep go to school come back and the game's still going on and like <laughs> some of the same people are still in it yeah uh, do you guys want anything like that for Final Fantasy? Large scale, just crazy PvP matches like that? I mean, I don't know. Why I mean, not? I think they we could do something. They they could do something kind of like uh, the what was the artifacts uh, uh, relic. Relic weapon zones again. Oh yeah, Baja. I forgot. Yeah. Baja, and then and then and then the one. Oh yeah, uh, Eureka. Yeah. Yeah. Like, imagine if they had like a persistent PvP zone like that, that kind of had objectives mm -hmm. that you would have to like do. I guess kind, <laughs> of, kind of similar to like Fates, but instead like PvP objective things. Um, yeah. they might be able to do something like that. I, I I could see that happening. I'm not sure how they would divide players though into like which side you'd be on like they could try to bring back the grand company thing but in the past that was kind of a 
data center Not. versus data center. Mm, yeah, they could I don't do think, that. I don't think they have the server tech uh, for that. I think they do. I think they do. What, think if, so? what if they did none of this? focus their energies on balancing the the one mode yeah that would be great uh no i i do think that they are going to start investing a good bit into uh more large-scale pvp again uh and mm -hmm. go that route we're going to see rival wings uh you know just random thought here is again another random interview just sometimes i get these weird not weird responses i guess some pretty good responses from yoshida but they just feel like what do i what do i pull from this response and one of the responses was that uh i can't even remember the exact question but i just remember the answer very clearly that they did have <laughs> some test scenarios where they had open world pvp going on mm. and the dev devs liked it uh, but it, I think they said that it's not something they thought could fit into the game. Wasn't that like that was like back in like 3.0, right? That, that he said that a long or like 2.0. That was a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. Uh. Uh. And I was like, man, that that would be <laughs> it. Would be interesting if they did that. The open world PvP concept would fit into its own like Baja or Eureka or something like that. Uh, and that's where yeah. they would place it. Mm -hmm. And so. It, they have to have something for the point five patch that is not what we expect, right? <laughs> so maybe that's it. Maybe. Um. It, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like open world PvP in this game would just result in people getting banned for like just, just like spawn camping or like you know corpse camping you or something. Which hey, I mean that's that's open world PvP if you. That's the fun, dude. That's, that's just that's the fun. immediately alienating your entire player base. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if it would fit with the with the culture. You get what I'm saying? One hundred percent wouldn't fit with the culture. <laughs> you would have to put nightclubs in places here for it to fit into the culture. <laughs> 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 you know? Yes. Eureka PvP nightclubs, right? We could do that. Mad. <laughs> It, uh, I, you know, it's cool. I, I do think it's really cool and everything else. But uh, I didn't expect back in the day when I started playing that half of Twitch on Saturday night would be nightclubs. Crazy. It's crazy. I, it's crazy too. Like as as because I um, DJed a lot, like professionally, in like the clubs around here, and it's just I I, I would have never expected there to be virtual RP DJing. Yeah. In 2022, but here we are. COVID, COVID man. Down bad. COVID. <laughs> and, it, and, it, and honestly, it wasn't even this year. I mean, it's, I, it, I think, I don't actually know how long, like, the nightclub, like, DJ dream thing has been around. I know I saw it last year, 2021. I'm not sure if even before that. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's been, there's been people, and this is, like, kind of off topic, right? But it's, it, it's crazy, and it's uh, amazing how many people have, have been so dedicated. <laughs> Yeah, for so long um and, get, and are getting like regular audiences and everything there were more on people for that. doing dj nightclub stuff than there were playing feast so we could yes. probably legitimately say it is a very big part of the game and yeah. we, i mean going back into like the culture of things final fantasy 14 culture you know we have our our people who want to play just for pve want to just play for pvp just want to play for different things they're getting good at the game getting skillful and everything else but the culture yeah. is very friendly welcoming for the most part right well, you can always find an example of where that's not true but for the most part it's we work together and have fun together versus fight each other like wow it was like you got a whole nother like half the game that you're like i hate this other side of the you know i mean they storyline's gone all crazy and shit but i mean like that yeah. was the purpose it was horde versus alliance final fantasy's like let's go together and kill darkness right then mark each other ignore then mark each other ignore <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah that's why pvp i guess fits a little bit weird in the final fantasy 14 is because it's just not not Final Fantasy fourteen culture doesn't uh I guess relate very well to beating each other up. 
Um, but we love it. Yeah, I mean, I think it is really cool, like how diverse the activities are in this game. Because mm -hmm. like we're like we literally, I've been talking for over two hours about this very small, tiny percentage of like what you could actually do in this game. Yeah. Uh, so it is, it is, it is cool that they did decide to go to to dive headfirst into putting all this time into making a new PvP system, making a new PvP mode, having three new maps, mm -hmm. um, and wanting to put in all this effort to try and make PvP bigger. Yeah. Uh, because it's always been a small percentile of the of you the uh, things people do. Really great. During this show, and I'm sure I'm going to destroy it here, and even during the EU event, and I guess even you'll probably notice during your Wolf's League, how many resident yeah. sleepers do you guys see? None, None actually. Wow, you're right. <laughs> I mean, that's amazing. Do you know yeah. how, how like frustrating that was when you're like over commentating on stage and you go back and you look at the VOD and it's just resident sleeper spam? <laughs> <laughs> or during live letters and stuff. Yeah, during that's live true. Letters. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that that and the phrase PVP went like hand in hand yeah. for the longest time. And it just unfortunately. Yeah, and now it's it's not there. Uh, I haven't seen it. It'll probably make a comeback. You know, I probably shouldn't have said anything, but like I think, <laughs> I think that's now amazing. we're gonna see it all night. Yeah, we're gonna see it all night. Uh, <laughs> I, I think that's really cool that people don't just look at the PvP mode and think it's a, a laughing joke. I mean, they may not, they may have complaints, they may say stuff, they may talk about it, but it's all like, it's all not super dismissive, right? It's not yeah. like, fuck that mode, I would never think or care or try to even uh, consider this as a, a thing that I do in this game. Uh, and that's yeah. been amazing for me, and I, that's why I love Crystalline Conflict so much, just for that fact at the moment. Um, so then, again, we're gonna see how this goes. <laughs> you know, we're all jaded ass people who've been doing this for years, and uh, but I don't know. I, I I think they did, you know, do a really good job at hitting the reset button and mm -hmm. having this new mode appeal to a wide, like a way wider audience. Uh, mm -hmm. So they've done a really good job there. They just have to now build it up and. You know, feed it the right food to uh, grow it into something really successful. There's, mm. there's, you know, some stumbling right at the start, but that's to be expected. But uh, we just have to hope that the de that the devs, you know, really aggressively, uh, you know, develop this mode in a proper way, uh, so we can, you know, stand the test of time and uh, be something that we can enjoy for months and years down the line. And next is like, uh, yeah, I hope it works out when I have time later. <laughs> I'll come back, right? And then just yeah. like <laughs> he'll just like not be playing, and then they announce like the you know crystalline conflict uh, regional championship. Ne like next just swoops in, wins the whole thing, and then like stops playing again. Yeah, possibly. Yeah, possibly. Okay. <laughs> uh, as long as you can beat the other players, that's all that matters, dude. Um, man. All right. So, uh, did they say anything past? Rival wings for like the future of PvP and what's coming to PvP in Final Fantasy fourteen. I believe there's more frontline changes coming. I guess that's an entirely different thing that's... we could talk about. They said like all of that though is coming with six point two. Yeah. Like it's like six point two is actually supposed to be a pretty big PvP patch because not only are they bringing back rival wings, but they also said they're doing they said from what I understand, pretty comprehensive balance changes specifically for frontline. Um, with the with six point one eight, they introduced kind of blanket percent um, adjustments for damage dealt and damage received, depending on the job. So, like for example, like some healers would uh, receive X amount percent less damage, but they'll deal X amount more damage. It's like blanket. Kind of mm. overall stuff like that, but apparently with six point two, they will be having more individual adjustments that are frontline specific that won't actually affect crystalline conflict. Oh, that's and they mentioned right. a few things. 
I think they mentioned like LB generation and rates and stuff uh, that will be different in front lines versus rival wing, uh, front lines versus crystalline conflict and uh, stuff like that. You know, uh, it, I don't want them to get split up so much like that because then they're starting to balance two different modes and they're over like extending how much work they have to put in to maintain you know, PvP in general, and then they have to start making priorities, and then maybe Crystalline Conflict's not the priority. Uh, so, that is kind of scary. Yeah, it's. I think it's one of the drawbacks of having, like, the limit breaks and stuff, because uh, Frontline's got to a really degenerate state where you would stack, like, Summoner or Scholar or anything with, like, a really powerful AoE, and you, you would just team wipe people by all L being at the same time. It, it only took three or four summoners all casting Bahamut at the same time to completely wipe an entire 24-man alliance. <laughs> so, and I mean, they they did the quick blanket changes this last patch, and now, I mean, melee jobs, they take like 60% less damage in front lines. Like 60, 60. Like, that, that, that's crazy. Like, yeah. if, the, if the numbers are that ridiculous that you have to, like, balance it by making a certain job take over, like, like half the damage you know, re like reduction. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, uh, that, that's crazy. Oh, and, yeah. uh, I, I don't know. You, you can kind of say that sort of plays into how your defenses aren't strong enough and damage is too crazy and crystal conflict, but, um, mm -hmm. we'll just have to see what, what, what the future brings. I, I hope there's good balance changes for both front lines and crystal conflict in this upcoming patch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think the worst thing they can do with crystal conflict is by, balancing it like they did with feast where it feels like they're just changing something by a thousand potency just to change it and we kind of saw that last patch where it's like oh this gets five percent here or that gets 500 to a thousand potency there and nothing really fundamental changes about the mode and then that's just going to slowly lead to like weird power creep of certain things and it's not going to change anything except for just making stuff more frustrating hmm Oh, yeah, and I agree. And we'll see at 6.2 exactly what changes. They have another live letter coming up at some point, I'm assuming, right? They should. Yeah. Probably. Like Probably I think it's usually two weeks or a week before. Happy would know. He knows. <laughs> he's so he's he's so on top of the... Like, he knows every date to every the... little <laughs> bit like an encyclopedia <laughs> for Final Fantasy fourteen. <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. I forgot if they do it one week. If the part two live letter is one week or two weeks before, it might be. It's like a two weeks before the patch. It's probably going to be Friday, August twelfth at four a.m. Pacific. I'm calling it. Now. Let me see. And we could be excited for it, or or the nineteenth. It might also be the nineteenth. Either one. And we're actually going to be able to be excited to get PvP information, and we'll probably get pvp information yeah i, I mean yeah. i don't know i don't know how much of it will be um crystalline conflict related but any pvp yeah yeah so. i mean yeah i do i i will be i'll i will mess around with rival wings and everything but i do think that are man are they gonna move custom matches to any other mode because that would be interesting to have custom matches for rival wings that would be crazy i don't know if well, the thing is, like, especially with the Discord communities now, um, like in Revival, uh, Argo has done it. There's also a, a Primal community called PV Primal, another big Discord. Sh like, shout out to all of them. All yeah. awesome, awesome Discords. But they do what are called queue syncs, where they kind of just, like, tell all of their community to, to queue up a mode at a specific time. Mm -hmm. um, and most of the people in that Rival, in that Frontlines game is, is just, like, people from the Discord. Mm -hmm. So, and they've been able to get like, there was one recently where it was like a collaboration between multiple discords. And I think they got like over 200 people queuing at the same time. Like, wow. spe like specifically that, that were part of that event. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's what makes me wonder like, man, there, there, there could be like having something like custom matches for front lines or rival wings could actually be really cool um i just don't know if they want to put in the you know time to to kind of program that in um because yeah. like because like it wouldn't hurt it being there right? mm -hmm. it's just either like people use it or they don't it's just i think i think it's more just do they want to put in the time like like the dev time just to like you know code it in 
yeah. and you know implement it but it, it would be cool i think it, it would be interesting yeah next would be playing all the kinds of custom matches i, I feel like he's just like checked out wait what <laughs> 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 like he... uh, custom matches of rival wings yeah hell yeah man and then you'll be the person who you're like i am your your team has decided that you'll be the robot dude and you'll go and you'll do all the robot <laughs> things yeah yeah or you'll just yeah, be the person who picks up tanks fun. like that's their whole <laughs> job and the entire thing little just tanks be, yeah tank acquiring fight next to the train yeah Oh my god. Make Reddit videos about Reddit knocking people into it. Oh, yeah, 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 Stop. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like epic fun, dude. It is. It is. Um, all right. Well, cool. I think, you know, we hit a lot of the, the topics we wanted to go over. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about PvP wise at all with Final Fantasy 14 before we get off the show? It may be until after the live letter before we have another PvP show. You can uh, hype up the league. Yes, so do it, plus plus hype up the league right now. Tell everybody everything about it. Can you um actually I could actually just switch to the slide. Uh because okay. I'm on OBS right now. I'm not sure, sure how well people will be able to see it. Yeah, you know what? But, uh, let's let's put it in the little box. <laughs> we can uh can figure it out. Put it in the little box oh, here. I got I'm not you reversed. sure. Hold on. Let me oh. Okay. You know what? It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. I can do this. Okay? I I can do this. <laughs> or you can I, just or you can just uh, pull up the uh no nah, no nah, nah. this is the way the we're flyer doing. It. This is the on way Twitter. we're doing. Uh so let's do this. We're going to go to transform uh flip horizontal. And then I'm going to take this guy put it way at the top and then let's change this up a bit. And go down to the side and we're just gonna pull it up <laughs> see this is how we do it on mog talk man we don't give a shit damn we just we just make it happen i have to i i have to take notes yeah dude now i even have like a little yell uh the little talk line the green line that shows mm -hmm. up right there uh you know that's fine i'm gonna leave it here it's, it's cropped good enough okay go ahead and talk about it man all right, so the Wolves League, it's a four-week-long or five-week-long um, tournament series for Crystalline Conflict. We did Season 1 in May through June, and that went incredibly well, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, Sir played in it, Next played in it. We had so many of like just the best players in the game uh, participate. Players from around the world, actually. We had a um, team team of Australians as well, who Sir is actually now playing on. Sir is playing with the Australians. What, what did you say they called that, uh, the uh, Sage LB? It's the swimming pool, man. <laughs> Sage LP is the swimming pool. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, a lot of awesome players, a lot of awesome teams, and uh, some of the Season 1 teams will be back for Season 2. But definitely, if you want to catch like the best of the best, like if you want to see what PvP at the highest level looks like, this is what you're going to want to tune into. We're doing we're doing it every Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern, on my Twitch channel, twitchtv slash plus one, including today, Saturday, June, uh, sorry, July 23rd. We have um, so Frosty and I are actually going to be commentating the second half of it, starting around probably around 9 p.m. or so. Um, mm. 8.39 p.m. Eastern, but uh, the first half will actually be Mr. Happy and Rakuri shoutcasting. So that's, that's going to awesome. be really cool. Um, we've had a lot of interest from the other, from like a lot of the big um, faces of the, of the community. Like I said, like, like Mr. Happy, Rakuri, we had uh, Rin Karagani as well interested in like shoutcasting. So it's, it's just a really fun event just to kind of bring everyone together have a good time, watch some cool high-level uh, PvP matches for Final Fantasy XIV. And kind of my whole goal with this was just that, like, I, did, I didn't want to wait around for, like, Square Enix to do an official tournament. So I'm just like, let me just do something with the highest level of production that I can uh, do right now with the time that I have. And uh, it's cool. It's a fun time. And hopefully you guys enjoy it if you do decide to tune in. 
Yeah, I need to take note from your production value. I don't know how you make all that stuff work out, dude. Like, I, I can't even get close to any of that production level. <laughs> so. Did you watch my uh, uh, production reel? Uh, for the for the event. I just uh, I just uh, posted one on my on my YouTube channel. Oh well, I need to go check look it out, at later. It, dude. Yeah, I'll go check it out. Yeah, I'll check it out. Yeah. All right, now I'm gonna. You can go back to your camera if you want to. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna try to recrop it. <laughs> Get you back in there. This is the Mog Talk production. <laughs> this is how we do it here. Uh. All right, I'm going to flip you back over so you can... It looks like you're talking to me. Okay. <laughs> All right, there we go. All right. Well, that's that's awesome. And, sir, you're going to be in it. Next is taking a small break, but he'll probably get jealous and envious at some point and join a team as a sub or something sometime during the season, <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. Well, cool. What else do you guys want to go over? Anything else before in the last few minutes of the show? PvP related? Uh, I guess I'll just throw this out into the ether. Sure. But in regards to crystalline conflict, I think in 14, like in PvE at least, in Savage, it's not impossible to clear, right? If you don't play it perfectly. And you have like a parsing culture where you have people who optimize like their jobs to like the maximum. And I think that's like a like a really cool thing you can do. And that there's like a huge skill ceiling for people to like express themselves in boss fights. Mm -hmm. I just I hope <laughs> my hope would be that in PvP it's possible to have like a high skill ceiling um but still have a system that people can play and have fun even if they aren't optimizing or playing at like the highest level right i guess it's that's kind of what 3.0 was and i just i guess i hope they can kind of get back to a system kind of similar to that okay so I mean, the reason why 3.0 was like that was because it was just a completely new mode and literally you had a whole job kit and nothing was balanced at all, right? From my understanding, you just like said, how yeah. is my job kit? How can I make it work? And it was a huge discovery process. Like there was so yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but yeah, there was there was a lot to learn. It, to me, it's kind of like, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, other games like Smash Bros., it's but Smash for me, Bros. it's kind of, well. Three point oh was was kind of like melee. I d I've never heard if, of Smash Brothers. If you understand. I, I don't even okay, know. Well, what you're well, talking no, no, about. no, okay. I, I just I mean like the story behind it and its like development. Because like melee was considered to be this like really high skill ceiling game, mm -hmm. and then like after that they released Brawl. Yeah. And it was like I don't know. They kind of made it you know casual friendly or whatever. It's yeah. uh, it's just similar to that in, in terms of like. How how fourteen went as well, where mm -hmm. it was like it was kind of like a high skill ceiling, and then they kind of dumped it down for later iterations. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No. That I I think I don't think the dumbing down of things will ever. That's just not something that we'll get away from. Maybe they will. Maybe they will make it more advanced. I do hope so. Uh, I I hope that they see a lot of interest and a lot of people digging into it and hitting that ceiling. And then wishing for more, and then they will deliver it because they have enough people wishing for that that extra bit uh, at the end there. Uh, I mean, it's all lined up for them. They just have to knock it out of the park. They, they have what they need to do. Uh, I mean, of course, they watch this show, so they know everything about all these comments. Oh, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, they, they know everything that we said. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, but Taking that, it to heart. Yeah. Uh, but you know what? We might as well merge this into like shout outs and closing things and everything else uh so since you said your last kind of words here next i also want to ask you if you have any shout outs or anything that you want to say uh, before we end the show uh i guess i'll just shout out the the hitman fam and what? hitman oh hit hit man yes. hit, hitman hitman okay yeah oh shout out to the the wolves league Hopefully, people can come and check it out. It's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, that's it. Okay. 
sir, I'll let you go next. Any last thoughts on PvP? Followed with any shout outs? Yeah, I I think what uh what next said was uh pretty spot on. I think uh you know PvP right now is it's it's at, it's at a very good starting point. It's got a very good foundation to build upon. But um you know I I think more needs to be done to allow uh, higher end players to express themselves in the proper ways. Uh, I, I I think more abilities should be added to the mode just to add some more depth there. But uh, that will hopefully come with time, and we just have to hope that the developers, uh, you know, curate the mode in the a proper way to you know facilitate growth rather than driving people away from it. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, I think the future of PvP uh, will hopefully be bright. And um, I'm, I'm looking forward to see what changes are coming in the, the next patch and the patches after that. Mm. And so, uh, yeah, just shout outs also. Shout out to Hitman. That's my team also. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, shout out to Plus One for the tournament and the, the, the league uh, that's going on right after this. Uh, I implore everyone to watch it. It's, it's, it's a really fun time. The production quality is insane. You guys will not be let down by that. And... Um, uh, yeah, I'm I'm just super excited for that, and uh, thanks for having us on, Frosty. Yeah, yeah, I mean, thanks. Yeah, the production quality. If you think about what you're seeing today, you can look at Sir's image, and that's about where we are. But Wolf <laughs> League's probably Nexus image. So, <laughs> <laughs> so just uh, oh yeah, shout out, shout out to Meffy, dude, for mm -hmm. creating this. Yeah, it's it's so good. Make sure they know it's so good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I'll let her know. Um. All right, plus I'll let you kind of close out with any thoughts and uh, shout outs and anything that you'd like to say. So I think, first of all, um, shout out to you, Frosty, uh, for wanting to keep ha keep shining a spotlight onto PvP over the years. It's, it's, it's always good to have as much like community support as possible. And, and you know, we had... So many incredible experiences in the past with, you know, being official commentators for the Feast Regional Championships. Mm -hmm. We went to Los Angeles, Vegas, Paris. Hopefully we get to do something like that again. I think that yeah. would be awesome. Um, I really, really do hope that they do another kind of official tournament run uh, for Crystalline Conflict. I think that the player base is there. I mean, I've seen it for two seasons now with the Wolves League. Um, a lot of players interested in high level light parties. So I do hope that Square Enix continues to put more time and um, care and focus into that uh, scene as well. Because I think it would actually pay off greatly just based on what I've seen so far and, and the success of the league and everything. Um, shout out to all the teams playing in the Wolves League, including. Uh, and or or who have played, including Next Sir, um, so many amazing players, so many amazing teams, and uh, you know these are really the players that are keeping the scene alive at like the high level. Um, so definitely a lot of so much respect to them for like wanting to keep um, for that they're taking the time to want to improve and like really give it their all and and show what PvP in this game is like all about. Um, because I think at like the end of the day, like the high level PVP scene, uh, especially if, especially if Square Enix starts to do like more official tournaments, that's really going to be a big draw for new, for like newer players wanting to get into the, um, so I think it's definitely important to like put a bit extra care into this, you know, caliber of, of, of player as well. Not, not just for, uh, new players, which, which is very important, of course, but like also focusing on like the high end of, of play is good as well. Um, but yeah, definitely check out the Wolves League after this, twitch.tv slash plus one in just about 30 minutes from now. Um, it'll be a good time. And outside of that, a few other shout outs real quick. Shout out to PvP Revival, discord.gg slash PvP Revival. You can check them out. Great Discord if you want to um, kind of get more into PvP. Uh, Argo as well if you're interested in high level pvp argo is running like regular custom matches um like every friday and you can check them out at teamargo.org and finally um shout out to pv primal as well if you're on primal that's also another great 
Discord community. You can check out. They're doing like regular Frontlines events. I'm sure they're also going to be getting into Rival Wings as well. But yeah, definitely a lot of amazing people in the community that are trying to do awesome things with it, events, um, and like all that good stuff. So definitely if you aren't in the PvP scene now, try to dive in and you know you might enjoy what you find. All right. Also, mm-hmm. one more shout out. Shout out to the uh, Team Revert PvP. That's my current Wolves League uh, team right now. <laughs> okay. uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay. They're, they're, they're all they're all sleeping. They're all Australian. It's fine. They they didn't hear. No. Oh, okay. 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 Well, guys, it's been a blast doing the show again. Uh, you know, this is definitely one of the shows I wanted to do back when uh, I decided to come back for at least uh, this month, and then uh, we're still figuring out next month and what that's going to look like and everything. Uh, next week we have a pending show. Uh, I'll have more details on that later to find out exactly what that's going to be. Uh, I need to get a little bit more information <laughs> if there's going to be any conflicts with it. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's been a great month so far. I'm probably going to, by the way, you probably will see me pop up doing some just random late streams here over the next week or so. Uh, to make sure I get all the the hours in for the Twitch ad revenue <laughs> stuff, because <laughs> I don't I haven't met the, that quota just yet. But uh, you'll probably see that. And there's some stuff I want to get into. I do want to explore the just uh, and I don't know. Plus, I'm, I'm put you on the spot. I'll probably uh, review some of the matches from the Wolf's League on there too. Just kind of go through and try to hyper analyze some of that stuff because I do miss the John Madden days of uh, when I was doing the stream and trying to pinpoint all the yeah, that stuff. That's something um, I've been wanting to do live mm-hmm. um, in between matches is bring on like an analyst. Uh, I, have, I have a few good people in mind uh, mm. who I think might be good for that. But unfortunately, I just haven't had the time to really like build that out from, from like the production side to be able That's to fun. do it. Because like the entire Wolves League, I'm actually doing myself. It's literally all a one man uh production like all of the assets the graphics the stream the logos the team logos the rosters the all of the operations for it like getting all the teams together the players together it's mm-hmm. uh it's almost it's pretty much like a full-time job but it's uh tough. it is it is it's been it's been worth it you know i've been I've, I've been having a lot of fun with it and uh hopefully everyone else has a good time as well yeah um I should, uh, on that note too, I should say that we are going to be doing a World Race event on this channel uh, when Savage does come out. For those that are curious, I, I, I've already probably said it uh, on Twitter if you follow that. Uh, and we have a lot of stuff coming up that's not yet to be announced, but should be super exciting. I uh, hope you guys, I, I hope at least, that we start to have some really cool stuff going on. Uh, and you'll learn more about that in the next few weeks. But... Guys, uh, again, thank you for coming on. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We are going to... There's a couple things. I'm going to hit the ad break button one more time, and then I'm going to run the credits, and then we're going to host Plus One here, where the Wolf's League is going to be happening momentarily. Uh, So stick around for that. Don't go anywhere. Just sit in the chat for a little bit longer, and then we'll move you in the right direction. Um, Thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you, everybody. uh, Thank you guys for talking with me. And until next time, remember, be good. Keep cool. Stay frosty. Everybody wave. Bye. I'm I'm waving. Bye. (laughs)